Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nothing But Net, where we talk all things and everything basketball. I'm Rhythm. I'm Cole. And I'm Kaya. And today, we have two super great special guests with us today. Deuce and Mo. Aw, you're too kind. I'm Morgan, or Mo, um, and it's, first of all, an honor to be here in the studio. Yeah, thanks. thanks for coming on our show. Thank you yeah. for inviting us. In um, For anyone that doesn't know us out there, we are basketball junkies, but um, we have our own podcast as well called the Deuce and Mo Podcast, and we are NBC what are we nbc sports california yeah. broadcasters <laughs> yeah. there we go i got to see us on king's broadcast yeah. king's pregame and postgame i'm deuce there. and we're happy to be here he's really good at like making it <laughs> short and sweet yeah. which is just super cool that you guys would just like come on our show of all Absolutely. Things. look i knew at a young age i wanted to like be involved in like some sort of broadcasting sports broadcasting probably like your guys' age and like I had this like thirst to like I wanted to do stuff. I wanted to work in the business. I do anything to like internet a place or whatever. And you all have like a desire to create awesome content. Yeah, yeah. consistent. And yeah. this is what's so special about basketball is it brings people of all diverse, it's a diverse amount of people from age groups, whatever, together. And we're just here talking hoops. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just having fun. One month. To go until yes. it all starts again. Yes. I know, perfect timing that we got together. Yeah, and to predict everything, right? <laughs> yes. So, should, yeah. so we, should we start off with uh, the Eastern Conference, the Western Conference prediction? Let's, let's talk some East. What, what do you want to talk about with the East? All right, so let's just. So what we do is we just go from 15 to 1 and talk about like each 15 to 1? Okay. <laughs> I mean, like in, in yeah. groups, in we're, groups. We're in yeah. first Okay. Three. So at my 15, I think the worst team in the East is definitely going to be the Nets, I would say. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm like, I have to pull up. Yeah. I'm really quick. All the teams. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think the Nets are going to be down there. It's clear they're in a rebuilding they, situation. They I think they're Cooper. content with like, yeah, let's go get Cooper Fly yeah. with the number one pick. But here's the thing: it's getting the war, having the worst record in the league is not a guarantee of getting the number one pick. Ask nope. the Pistons. About yeah. That. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But I mean, they also got a boatload of picks from the Knicks and the Mikel Bridges show. That's right. Uh huh. And counting all the KD Kyrie picks involved. They have so much picks for the future and their season, literally this season is just let Cam Thomas cook. I feel like that's just, <laughs> that's you just know, Jordy Fernandez, who, you know, of course, oh, yeah. Sacramento last, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of years with Mike Brown staff is now the head coach. Great guy. Um, I think he's going to like set like a legit culture. So like, you know, in our eyes, it's like, they're going to be bad. They're going to be trying to tank. No, I think he's going to try to establish a culture of like, no, this is how we play. Even if we're yeah. not good, yeah. We're not going to be easy sure, to be. Yeah. And he's high on Nicholas Claxton. He said the other day, he's like, I think he can be an all defensive guy in the yeah. league. Yeah. And that last yeah. that last season with um KD and Kyrie on the team, that 2023 season, Nick Claxton for a good period of time led the league in blocks. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, you think about him and his length alone, but it's also going back to kind of what Deuce was saying with Jordy Fernandez being able to set that tone and set that standard. They could be one of those annoying teams, right? Yeah. That like even though yeah. they're gonna lose a lot of games and not have the best they're roster. Randomly just beat yeah. The or something. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see what they can do. Interesting. Okay, they're at the bottom of your list in the East. Yeah. yeah. Would that be for everyone though? I I mean, I'm, I would say maybe Pistons. Okay. Fair. You know, the team that I just don't know about, and you, you from a talent perspective, you'd probably be like, I don't think they're going to be the worst team in the East, but look out for Charlotte. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, they're just a hospital at this point. It's it's just, <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's just like, you know, you, if LaMelo stays healthy, you do wonder too. With They're in this weird kind of transition period. It's uh -huh. like they've got a lot of young pieces, and then yeah. they have some guys who've been around for a second. What are they trying to do? I like I, I like in my head I'm like I couldn't I would not be surprised if we get like a Lamelo trade or something really? at some point. Yeah, I mean maybe uh, you know I mean you disagree with that. I I can see it, yes. but like he's kind of like their guy that they're trying to build around. Obviously, he gets like injured like every like five games. Yeah. <laughs> but like he he's good, yeah. and I think especially like with like the team they're building around like Lamelo, I think that like. They can get better. I think they're still kind of like bottom of the barrel in the East. Yeah. But maybe if they get some lottery luck and get like Cooper Flag, 
maybe like everyone every, every yeah. anyone <laughs> can get cooper five we've, yeah. we've seen with the hawks last year that oh yeah you can get the number one 3% pick chance to get one. yeah yep. it honestly like the lottery is just it, it's a lottery and hey you can still mess up the number one pick too huh exactly yeah. well, well we don't know that yet but and the other thing too is like to your point about the lottery is like back in the day the lottery odds are so different if you had the worst record in the nba you had a 25 percent chance of getting the number one pick and now that the league has evened it out i just think it's in a much better spot because now you know the worst te- th- three teams have yeah. Like equal odds. And I, yeah I, I, I like that you know yeah, I, yeah. I think it, it makes it much more difficult to truly go into like tank mode because there are no guarantees and i like that but I, yeah. I don't know where Charlotte's direction is this season because, in my opinion, they took a huge reach in the draft with Tijon Salon. I think that he's going to take a lot of time to develop because he's, you know, an yeah. international prospect. But they also have two really good win-now players. LaMelo Ball, if, if he can stay healthy, he's a really good player. But also Brandon Miller. He was probably, my, in my opinion, yeah. the second-best rookie that year with his, you know, spacing and switchability. But also... Mark Williams as their franchise center is sure. also injury prone. He's yeah. going to miss the first, I think. I think, I think I, for me, when I look at that roster and then I look at the East, though, there's just things I don't get excited about, right? You know, and, and that's that's my issue. I mean, that's I think it's very negative because they're still, like you said, like even with Miller, like such a good basketball player and showed so much potential after his first what half of the season beginning yeah. of the season wherever yeah. you want to go with that so yeah i i don't i mean definitely bottom still with them also you know a guy that you no one really likes talking about on that team is for obvious reasons miles bridges, oh, miles yeah. bridges that's right he, he's very talented he's a and, good player unfortunately so they have some interesting pieces but yeah i just i just wonder from a talent perspective you wouldn't say the worst team in the east but you're like Man, wh- where are they going? Yeah, and what's that gonna look like? I mean, but they have a new coach this year, and I, yeah. I saw him at California Classic, and he, he seems like, I mean, I, I know I wasn't specifically listening into the huddle for everything he was saying, but he was really like getting his guys going, and I, I have really faith in Charles Lee to do the right thing for this team. Whether it's, you know, maybe they not win, but just like the Nets, like establish a culture in Charlotte that maybe they could move on from or move off of uh, going in the future. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say that, I was gonna say that um, they can also build off of like a great culture like uh, Philadelphia or like Brooklyn or anything and make like a great team, you know? Yeah. It, I mean, ag- again, looking at the bottom of the East, though, you even look at last year and how many times we were like, oh, if the Sacramento Kings were in the East, they would have made the playoffs. Yeah, it yeah. would have been this. And so I, I sadly always um, have this idea of those bottom teams like they're just never going to be yeah. good enough even if they do have these talented players right. on them in two other teams that i mean we can go in order but just i want to mix in this bottom of the yeah, barrel sure, sure. would be like even washington mm-hmm. i think yeah. even I, they, th- they're like similar charlotte where you there's talent but you're like what are they where are yeah, they trying what, to yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah, is jordan pool a franchise point guard Kuzma, like I, <laughs> yeah. they, you know they Bilal have Kulubali, oh, yeah Valentinus also, but Bilal Kulubal is really good. Yeah, I mean, very talented yeah. defensive player. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with Alex Starr as well. Just oh, to kind of how he develops. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, but I really like Bub Carrington coming out of Pitt. I think I do too. I think he's gonna quicker than most people think replace Jordan Poole or maybe move Jordan Poole to the bench or maybe move him to the two. But I don't like the size of Jordan Poole. Yeah, but, I don't. I don't think George, Jordan Poole should be starting because like yeah. when he had like that good playoff run in Golden State, it was always like he came off the bench. And yeah, he's always he been just a needs. He, I think I think he needs a different type of leadership or coach around him. You know that is is instilling a different type of discipline. You know that like where there is no because I I think he has so much potential as a good basketball player in this league in a certain role, right? But like his role, what he's in now, kind of like you're saying, is just it's not it. He played better last year too. Once they did move him to the bench, but then they had to put him back in the lineup because of injuries. But yeah, um, I know we're going a lot of different directions here, but I, I I think I tend to agree with you. Like Brooklyn's the worst team in the East. Yeah. Um, but you when you bunt, thro- <laughs> there's just a lot of bad teams in the bottom of the East. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, like, I'm not in love with any of them. Oh yeah, the I, Raptors I think, too. Honestly, <laughs> I, I'm pretty high on the Raptors. Are you? This okay. Year. I think that we saw Scotty Barnes. I know he had a sophomore slump, but his th- this like last season, mm-hmm. he was really good. Yeah. And Barrett and quickly coming from contender culture in New York, um, it's not like they're 
waiting to develop. I know we haven't seen Barrett really break out into someone who we saw he was at Duke, but he's yeah. still a good NBA player, and so is quickly. And then Bruce Brown. Yeah, they, I mean, I think they're gonna. I don't think Bruce Brown because his contract is up this year. I don't think he resigns with Toronto, so I think they move on from him this year. Uh, Davion Mitchell. Oh, oh yeah, yeah Dav- Davion's Davion. in Toronto. That's right. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I just look at them as like a classic team that like. There's some intriguing talent, and maybe they get good enough to be in the play-in, which in the East you could win like 38 games. And yeah, yeah, team, yeah. You know, um, I but mean, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty high on. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna say that they're gonna be like a top seed. I think that they could make it like to the 10th seed, like the 9th seed, like you said, like be okay. a play-in team. Because I'm a lot of like they traded their guys, like Siakam. I mean, I know they traded Siakam for picks, but the Ananobi trade, they got players back in return. And I think that's the Move, like they Masai Ujiri wants to get young players instead of like wait for these draft picks to happen and I kind of like that way that they're going because like they're not fully tanking okay still, okay like, so we, we all agree then we're putting Brooklyn 15. Brooklyn 15 yeah, yeah Brooklyn bottom so then who's 14 Washington or Charlotte probably what right? didn't what did we, what did what did we decide with Detroit Detroit's got to be 14 14 okay yeah. okay okay yeah, yeah wait, oh you still you okay I, you're high on Detroit, too. I love it. <laughs> I mean, okay. They lost. They had the biggest losing streak in the NBA last year, uh-huh. right? And I know that they – I don't I don't like the pick of Ron Holland because the one thing that they needed last year was shooting. And Ron Holland, he does not – he's not the best shooter. I think that they should have taken someone like a Dalton Connector and Montez Buzelis, right? But they got a shooting coach who is like – notorious for being one of the best three-point shooting coaches in the NBA. They said he's going to work with the Sar Thompson. They said he's going to work with Ron Holland, who are already really good defenders. And defense is a skill that a lot of people don't have, but those two are, I mean, they've only been in the league for a year, and Ron Holland's a rookie, but they're kind of elite at it, at defense. So if they could add that jump shot, I wouldn't say Yeah, I mean, I'm not, like, long-term I hear that, but I'm like, is Ron Holland all of a sudden going to turn into a three-point shooter this year? No. No. I think you just look at their roster, and there's a talent deficiency to to other teams. I mean, you you had Tim Hardaway. I'm sorry, Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be <laughs> chucking like crazy in Detroit. Tobias other, Harris? Tobias Harris. Oh, Tobias Harris. I, I like, How does he keep getting away with those contracts? Like, I just don't <laughs> he, you know what? He has gotten a lot. He's one of those guys that I think is a good player, but he gets contracts that make you go. Is he, he really that like good? A, look, I think he's a solid player. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I, I think a guy his size that can score and do some rebounding, yes. And I think... At his position, too. But there's also, a lack at that position. Yeah, I, I, like. I don't love that he went to the Pistons. Like, I'm going, sure. what are you trying to yeah. do? Make I money. Mean, what's your motivation? Make money. But in Philly, like, you're watching him in Philly, and there's so many times it's just, like, standing in the corner. And, you know, he had the challenge at times of playing in a system that featured Embiid and Harden, which was challenging. And I felt like he got lost in the shuffle a lot in Philly. Um, and so his number, you know, he's just inconsistent. I don't think it was a good fit for him there. In Philly, yeah. I mean, I think he just wanted to go to a contender. But, I mean, I yeah, I don't understand the Pistons because they needed to spend that money some way throughout this offseason. But, I mean, I mean, I can kind of hear that they won't be like a 11 seed, you know, top yeah. playing. I mean, not 11 yeah. seed playing, but like 10 seed, right? But maybe 14 would work. But I think that their players could, like, they won't, the team will be like a top team. But I think that the players could develop a lot this year. Yeah, because they're they're all like still really young on yeah. Detroit, and like they have like, like they've gotten like not good lottery luck recently, but like they still have good players and okay. like Asar Thompson and uh, what was his name? Um, Jalen Duran's nice. I oh, Jalen yeah. Jalen I oh, yeah. and Cade as well. If he doesn't get injured, well, and that's I think this is it's a like, massive year for Cade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. This, I think this is either going to be his breakout year. Or he's going to get injured again. <laughs> either one, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Also, I know this is like a little like reason why I don't want them to be a really bad team. Yeah. I really don't want Cooper Flag to go to Detroit. I mean, because <laughs> I just don't see the fit. I think that they have franchise players. I mean, not franchise. But I mean, they have like really good developing players at every position. They got Kate at the one, Ivy at the two, Asar, Ron Holland, three or four. Yeah. And then Duran yeah. at the five. I, I don't see the fit for Cooper Flag. You know what? Know. You know what the fit is? You need talented players. That, when that you're is right. That team, is you just need talent, and you figure it out later. That you is know, right. You can't yeah. get so – I mean, it's kind of what the Kings did years ago when, mm-hmm. you know, they could have drafted Luka, and they went, well, how's he going to fit <sighs> next What's to Fox? It's like, 
who cares? Like, yep. Fox you can, is a yeah, you player. have to make it work, yes, right? Or, or if if it doesn't work, you trade one of them and you get assets. Yeah, yep. like little. That's literally what happened with um, uh, Halliburton and, and Fox. They traded one of them because right. it didn't work, and, and, and they got Sabonis and back. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Now everything's happy yeah, for both so, teams. So would we yeah. put Detroit at fourteen? Are we confident with that? Or uh, so. Brooklyn, then let's do. I say let's do Detroit. Let's just do Detroit. Also, I know they made the tweaks, but let's just go with like track record last year. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just if if everyone's cool with that. Unless, I mean, yeah. I, this is so tough for me because I feel like the bo- I, you can. I could be talked into anything with the bottom of uh-huh. the East. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so I'm cool with it. Okay, so yeah. thirteen. We're gonna go Washington. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thirteen Definitely, Washington, yeah, twelve Washington, Charlotte, twelve Charlotte, twelve. Okay, twelve. Char- Dang. So then we're putting Toronto at that eleven spot. Then yeah, I are we? That's fr- or are uh, we putting Chicago? Oh, that's Ooh, right, Chicago. That's a good one. What's Chicago? Tra- I gather. <laughs> how many times are we gonna talk about these teams? I'm just like <laughs> yeah. Chicago. Like yeah. they they would have done would anything they, to move Levine. Yeah, yeah. And they couldn't do it. Jerry Reinsdorf just like. He, he's not having fun right now as a sports owner. Yeah. <laughs> With the White Sox setting the all-time record. Yeah. Oh, so much losing losses. happening. Um, you think about the Bulls offseason and what they lost, too. Yeah, and it's DeMar, big... Caruso. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't even know why people are – because, like, I get the that he didn't fit at some points in time with OKC, Josh Giddy. Um, but I kind of like the – I mean, they didn't get any first-round picks back, which is kind of a bad – but I wouldn't say it's, like, a really bad trade for the Bulls. I like Josh Giddy as a franchise I do too. point guard. I mean, I know he had, like, a funny injury. But, but we keep talking about fit, too, in, in just, like, I guess opportunity for these guys, right? Like, I think sometimes when – which guy were we talking about with Pistons? Uh, Tobias Harris, even with – uh, Philly, some it's all situational, you guys, right? It's like Tyrese Halliburton, even that, like it, it was not going to work with the fit here, but look at the fit for him on a different roster in a different system as a different player. And even for Josh Giddy, like what is really around him though, but maybe because of his passing ability and his vision, he'll be able to even make the pieces that he has around him a little bit better. And I think that's a big thing is like, you know, in OKC, it's, it, it was tough when the ball was in his hands, yeah. you know? And I think in this situation, it's got to be more. Yeah. You still have Levine there, but you still White. have like Kobe White, who yep. had a really yeah, good year last year, yeah. too. He should have won most improved, in my opinion. Yeah, Ooh. so um, it's a team that has some talent, but, yeah, I mean, I think they're kind of in that weird spot, and whatever happens with Levine, they re-signed Patrick Williams, who, like, I think on paper, you, you know, you always, I've always, I've, I've tried to talk myself into Patrick Williams so many times, Loves but another Patrick guy Williams. who seemingly has all the tools yeah. and the physical attributes His that you would want in a player, right. you know, but, yeah. like, has trouble staying on the floor, has mm-hmm. trouble being consistent. Sometimes opportunity can open up for a player like that, and yep. maybe he could show something, but I, I yeah, I, I'm not a big yeah, fan I, I mean, of what the, that team is. I think they could have gotten so much more value for from, like, because they got Chris Duarte and a couple of centers for DeMar, but they could have gotten, if they traded him at last year's deadline or maybe last yeah, year's offseason, yeah. I think that they could have gotten first for DeMar it's DeRozan. Because, yeah, because, yeah. you know, I think it's, it's that balance of knowing when yeah. to pull the trigger on those things. Yeah. And, and also, like, last year, they were kind of, like, in that gray area where they were, like, too bad to be good, but too good to be bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, they couldn't, like, now they've obviously made the moves to where they're now, like, starting to, like, become, like, an outside play-in team. But, like, last year, they were kind of on the cusps. So, I understand why they didn't make any moves. But, like, in hindsight, they should have. So, then we're higher on the Raptors than we are I on would the say Chicago. that. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, then let's do Chicago 11. Uh, Yeah. Chicago 11, Raptors 10. Or are we still, go- are we still looking? I, I, I mean, Raptors 10. Rap- right? Yeah, Raptors who, who 10. Is, is there anybody? Is, I feel like, is there anybody I feel like the only team? other team that I would put at 10 is the Hawks. I was going to say, oh, yeah. Oh, that's. The Hawks. Like, we. I haven't really talked about them at this point. <laughs> okay, so yeah, well, of course I'm a Kings fan, but the Hawks are my second favorite team because NBA, because Trey Young is my yep. favorite player. So I'm always gonna be high when I'm talking about the Hawks. Okay, and I think that um, of course we know who Trey Young is, right? Jalen right. Johnson had a breakout year last year. If he he didn't make the games played minimum 65, so he couldn't have won Most Improved, but I think he definitely would have. Yeah. Um, and so you got Trey Young, you got Jalen Brunson, who, I mean Jalen Johnson, who I call like. Basically, he's like the mini LeBron James of the, of the Atlanta Hawks. 
Whoa. I'm being serious. Oh, yes. we got we got like a Holy real Hawks wait, fan over here. That's because <laughs> of his he he can finish at the rim over pretty much anybody. He has the I mean he's not the he best can. at he has but he has playmaking chops. He can shoot and he, the only thing he needs to work on is just his getting everything a little bit better, right? Yeah, and probably like I don't know like be like a generational passer, <laughs> have like okay. the vision. It, it might be a little bit glazed, IQ but as yeah. one of the best. He, he's I not like LeBron. LeBron. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm I looking like at the roster though. right now because I'm just like thinking about their offseason. You know, they make the trade with Dejounte Murray, which you know, uh, like it didn't work. They probably should have made that trade to begin with. I and was that, super high on um, that. Really. I like, um, I like Dyson Daniels. Me too. That's uh, what I was yeah, about to say. Good yeah. defensive player. He's got to find a way to you know knock down some shots. But I think. Give it him some more opportunity could be good for him. But I'm looking up and down that roster. I'm just like, okay, it's it, just it, it, it yeah. screams average, Mid, yeah. okay. below I average feel like to I me. See another season of mediocre. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. Trey's gonna do his thing in a big night, and then they're gonna lose games, and people are gonna talk about trading Trey. Like yeah, every day, it, yeah. it, it just so yeah. feels Spurs, like the same year. It, it, I, I mean, we'll, we'll see how like Rishache like yeah. evolves, but I, I don't. Yeah, what are you expecting? I don't, yeah. I don't expect much. Am I, I like this crazy? Year. Like, why is everyone so low on Risa Shea? Like, I, I think, well, I think sometimes, I mean, think about it. If you guys are obviously younger, but being in Sacramento, when there's a bottom of the barrel team, the league and the narrative around it, people have fun, like, crapping on them, right? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. just, like, more fun for people. And I think with the Hawks, there's a lot of jokes surrounding them. There's a lot of, like, people just wanting to kind of build that narrative around them, like, they don't know what they're doing. And so we'll see with what his development ends up being. Um, obviously, there was a lot of people saying that that shouldn't have even been the number one pick all the things blah blah but yeah. i mean but, they but were we'll, they were like, forced kind of but and let's wait and see too right because yeah, i know he got hurt i mean he, he sat out a couple games in summer league yeah. but for the games he did play he looked pretty good i think he dropped 20 in his first game he he looked really good he, yeah i think it's also just tough too because we're talking about really young talent coming into mm -hmm. a yes league and this is like this is a grown man's game and yeah. like the physicality of summer league is going to be a little different than the physicality of like nba regular season basketball um so i think you saw maybe some moments in summer league i think you saw moments of him just being raw because he is young and you're just gonna have to exert patience with it, you know. That's that's the reality. This is a big jump for him to go from that league to yeah. the yeah. NBA and expect yeah. anything in year one. It's mm. tough. Okay, fine. Then we're gonna put Hawks ten, then Toronto nine. Ooh, because I mean, right now we have Chicago eleven. Chicago eleven. Hawks ten. will put in that ten spot, and then you want to go uh, Raptors nine I and. Mean, by the way, it's the Eastern. Yeah. I sh shouldn't be mean about. The, it's the Eastern Conference. The Eastern Conference. Yeah. And we're, are, we're we're saying we're not like trying to pick plain or something. We're just we're, talking about the end of the regular season. We're just making predictions standings. of yeah, where yeah. we yeah. where we stand with yeah. them right now yeah. before like any trade yeah. or the deadline sure, sure. happens. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, thankfully we didn't film this last week because like the Knicks predictions. Were oh my so different, but goodness! We'll yeah. get there. A little, we'll get little the, bit that's here. at the top. Yeah, th that's yeah. in the future. <laughs> <laughs> in like 10 minutes time but okay. yeah. um I, yeah. really not, raptors nine i feel like i mean yeah i mean i mean like you're I still are you still trying to push them higher or what no no, no. i think that it, i think raptors 10 hawks nine because okay the hawks are trying to win but also he loves the, the, ha the hawks are trying to win but they're not doing a good I mean, job it's of it. cute i mean i don't know what how they're trying to win they they need to trade capella first of all <laughs> yeah see and that's the thing like these teams like you say they're trying to win. It's like no, they they're stuck with Capella, right? Like because no one wanted to trade for him at, at, at any point. At the, they're probably asking too much and his salary. The, they cleaned up the Dejounte Trey Young thing, which I think is a good thing. I think those two need to be broken apart. But I'm like, I don't like what they're seeing. I mean, yeah, I, I guess they're they're in that range. I don't yeah, really have a problem with it. I mean, not in either. this year, but like in the future, a defensive lineup to cover of Trey Young of Dyson Daniels at the two, Reza Shea at the three, Jalen Johnson at the four. That's tall. That's big. That's I think better be able to make next. shots. Yeah. yeah. Better be able to knock down some shots. And I just I think I think if we go by track record for Trey Hawks Trey Hawks. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Trey, they've been, yeah. Trey That's Hawks. True. Well Trey Young on the Hawks, it's what what is the system with him? What is the 
what is your identity as a team? Mm -hmm. Is it right. Trey and the rest of you? Or you know what I mean? I think they've, yeah. they've tried even with Murray. They were like trying to do different things. But it's like when you have a ball heavy guy and the, this guy is an undersized guard out there. So he's also going to be a liability on the defensive end that we've seen so many times. You're just you're asking a lot from him in in like with him it, with the ball in his hands to create to do more instead of really making sure you're getting everyone else involved and have a different system that like everyone else can see success because the with. offense runs through Trey. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, he averaged 11 per assists per game last year. Yeah. So like it, he definitely passes the ball a lot, and like the Dante didn't work out because like he is the point guard, and like yeah. I think like the vision with Dejounte when they like traded for him was to kind of like. Give Trey Young some help in the backcourt, but like he kind of doesn't need it. Yeah, because I watched a lot of Hawks games last year. It was literally just. Of course he did. <laughs> it was literally just like Trey, you can cook this possession. Dejounte, yep. you can cook it. it was just alternate. Like and it, 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 it when Trey was out, like uh, he missed a game. Dejounte, Dejounte went crazy. Sometimes yeah. Murray would cook. You're like, yeah, he had like what two game winners, yeah. three game winners, something. Okay, fine. So we'll go. Then we'll go. Uh, we'll Raptors put 10. Raptors 10. We'll put Hawks, Hawks nine. 9 for you, even though it doesn't mean that we are <laughs> all in agreement. We're just we're just it's getting yeah, yeah. We're trying to get to a consensus. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. making compromises. Okay. 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 That's fine. okay. Fine. And then, okay. Eight. Miami. Where's Miami. where? Okay. Because you you still want to. Are we still believing in like Cleveland, what they're going to do next year? Donovan Mitchell, all, all right. these things like. You're, I, not, you're gonna drop them to. I'm not gonna drop them to eight, but I'm just making sure like we're going top five with Cleveland. Top, top five? six, yeah. Top six, yeah. Okay, okay. Top, okay, okay, okay. So I think eight is Miami. I would okay. say. Yeah. Okay. No. Orlando. No. Orlando. No. Orlando. Well, no. Orlando. Orlando. You. I mean, you look at last season, and then you would definitely have that yeah. idea. But at the same time, I every time I get so excited about their roster every year. Yeah, because they're so young. Magic. Orlando Magic. Yes. Oh. That's such a great song. Yeah. It is. Um, and they had KCP. I oh, like yeah. KCP. I even yeah. forgot you about that. You need a guy that can go out there, not only defend, and I know they got guys that can guard, too, on that roster already, but he can knock down a three. Yep. And he's been on really good teams. He's been on a couple of championship teams. For him to come in there with a young team, I think that helps him a lot. I still think, and like looking, I'm like, can where's where's the shooting um and i you know i i, I a little concerned about wagner because i felt like like it's not just that that game he had against cleveland in the playoffs where he couldn't m make a shot but it seems like the shooting's been inconsistent you're just waiting for him to break mm -hmm. out a little for, bit for him i feel like the reason that he struggled in that series was i think it's just because of like like the Jared Allen mean from the Jared Allen mean from last year, the lights were too bright. Like he's still a young player; he's still gonna get time to develop. Yeah, and yeah. I, that was like yeah. that was that team's first time in the playoffs, and they took, um, what they took a like a real contender, I would say, to mm -hmm. Game Seven. And I feel like that that kind of shows the development of like they could develop into a really good team. And right. with Ben Caro, like yep. Ben Caro's a stud. He, yes. Yeah, that, that's, really that's the real mini LeBron James. That's the real. I mean, <laughs> I, I've never I like seen it. our first time seeing Ben Caro. We were in Vegas. His for summer league, his rookie year was that Kings Magic game where he and Keegan so went fun. head to head. Oh, the one where they hit the Keegan yeah. the three yep. times yeah. at the end. Um, but Ben Caro is such. A big guy. Huge. When you mm -hmm. see him in person, it's striking to see a guy his size he's do the things good. out there he can do. Um, so, I, you know, if he can get his game to even another level, which why couldn't he? Yeah. If Wagner yeah. figure some stuff out. He had Casey. I, li I mean, I like their team. I, I agree. I really do like their team. So then we're definitely, we're going to, then let's yeah, shove let's Miami at eight. And then, Ooh. I mean, are we gonna put? Should we talk about Miami? Yeah, let's talk about Miami. Okay, let's yeah. talk. Let's okay. talk about Miami. And why are we shoving them at eight then? And I think it's just because. Bad vibes. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, they they've kind of been like Bad the eighth vibes. seed for the last few years, and it's worked out. Like, because I know, like last year they like went to a or no, not last year, two years ago they went to the finals, and then last year they kind of got yeah Jimmy got yeah. injured so then that kind of didn't work out but he still stole a game from Boston and they but, sure depend on yeah. one player a lot Jimmy's probably yeah. going to get traded yeah I've seen this those rumors yeah my, if I had my to Philly my NBA hot take right now is no uh he gets traded this year okay Actually, I can see it 
I, I think there's been enough noise about like their kind of unhappiness about him. You look at his age. You could see Miami going, look, do we do we care about this eight seed? Like, do we? Why why not sell? I'm not gonna say say sell high on Jimmy, but you're selling higher than higher, a lot of yes. Yeah. And yeah. maybe there's some team that's willing to take a swing. Mm. That is, it, you never know what could happen. Yeah, and because like last year. Or no, not last year. Two years ago, he kind of carried the team on his back, and they went to the finals. But then, as soon as he got injured, they got like they're a whole different. Yeah, team. they got walked in the first rounds, mm -hmm. and but, it's kind of like he's can turn it on in the playoffs, but in the regular season, he doesn't do that. So, like, it depending on where they are in like the standings, like at the deadline, they might move on from him. I can see that, but I don't think they will. I feel like. I mean, they're t they traded for Thierry Rougier. That was like their big move, and I think yeah. Thierry Rougier fit super well. He just couldn't stay on the floor. Yeah. Um, and it was just, I mean, they have their franchise player. I think Bam is their franchise player over Jimmy for me. Oh yeah. They, they re-signed Bam right right before the draft to a max, and they got Kalel Ware in the draft. And I, I would like. I like him. I, 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 that lineup of Bam at, at the four and Kalel Ware at the five, or maybe switching them, but that front court, that I'm really high on that. Yeah. yeah. I I think they could. Yeah, I'm not. Sh I, We're I'm still like, shoving them in that eighth yeah, spot. Yeah, I don't though. know about Miami because, like, are they? Do they? I mean, I know they're gonna try to win, but like, I mean, I don't like. I'm just. It's such a confusing team this yeah, year because, a like, open. a lot of teams got better, and I don't. They didn't really get better for someone who's. Everyone is saying like Miami's always a contender, always a contender, mm -hmm. but they didn't really get better in the last year. And the first thing you guys mentioned, like bad vibes, you know, like not even having. And the, I shouldn't say the whole team has bad vibes. I just think the Jimmy I get it. thing. It, it's, it's the been energy. Enough noise out there about the Jimmy Butler future yeah. thing and his contract. Right. And like, are they happy with it where you're wondering, okay, is that going to come into play? Those things matter when you talk about an 82 game season. You know, yeah. and I think right. you go back to, to last year with the Warriors, like Clay's contract status does definitely mess with things with the Warriors and their yep. chemistry and, you know, Draymond stuff. Like, so those things can impact definitely. at you. Um, and, I know Miami's always, you know, they get the most out of the talent that they have. They're going to mm -hmm. play hard. That's always going to be a part Key of their culture, like, DNA, yeah. like no doubt about it. But um, I, I just don't see it this year. With yeah, them. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just so confused. Yeah. Like, that's just the <laughs> confusion. It's just like, it's <laughs> let's, let's see if they're aggressive and they make tweaks like we were talking about even with like, Jimmy. And like, they missed out on Dame. Like that was a, that mm -hmm. was yeah, a yeah, yeah. They wanted Dame. They wanted him to pair him with Jimmy and Bam. And who knows and what that looked like in the East. I don't think that would have been good I, enough, but still. For me, I just like I don't like I think I don't think that they could truly be a real championship winner if Pat Riley is still up in the front office. What? Mean, yeah, for me because what? he made them miss out. <laughs> he missed out on. I mean, I know he's like the notorious guy, uh -huh. but he missed out on Dave and he missed out on Donovan Mitchell for what for just to wait for Terry Rozier. And I mean, yeah. I feel like he saw that they won in 2020. I mean, he. Went to the finals in 2023, and he was like, "Oh, we can run this team back. Like we we are we just made it to the finals." And I just I like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and their team is fragile because I mean, they try to run it back, and Jimmy got injured, and the team fell apart. He's patient, you know. Like, and obviously has seen so much success. Where I think it, he's one of those guys where I just don't, I don't, I don't put it on him until the blame definitely needs to be on him. And but I think there's so many times we talk about like, oh, he didn't do this trade. I think when you take a swing that you're giving up picks or you're giving up, you know, assets, whatever, you want that swing to put you in like legit contention. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think there are some GMs that are like, like even I think Golden State faced that a little bit. Like I think Golden State, they were interested in marketing. Yeah. But they're like, would he make us better? Yes. But is he going to elevate us to championship contention? We're mortgaging and our entire yeah. future for That's this, it. I mean, and then what? Are what? How much better are we? And yeah. it's a, it, especially yeah. with this the the new rules that they have with the CBA, CBA and yeah. the, the apron, second apron. That's gonna have a huge impact on teams. It just had one on one last Minnesota, night with yeah, Minnesota when they moved cats. So <laughs> we'll um, get to that it, later. Those, those are the things that you have to. I I think with if anything, you look at something like Miami. They, they don't do rebuilds, but I think they will cut bait and change some things up fast and mm -hmm. you know i yeah. imagine yeah. Bam's like they would rather eight. spend in free agency than rebuild yeah so miami eight then mm -hmm. and then we're should we 
should we go Orlando or are we like no are we getting crazy and we uh, where are we putting Milwaukee Ooh, at seven no, no. I mean I'm not going that crazy yet but the, uh, I'm just so down on Milwaukee right too. now but um, like yeah. obviously yeah. you have Giannis Antetokounmpo uh -huh. you're still going to be up there but at the end of the day this is a team sport and some of the teams you see at the top in the Eastern Conference are good teams yeah. not just individuals yeah, oh, yeah. I mean I for me, at seven, like, can we put talk about like Indiana potentially going? Um, I have them. I have them higher. Look, yeah, you're, you're, they're a top four team. Indiana, uh, and this is this is gonna be an interesting discussion. Ooh. Injuries for me, injuries led them to the conference finals. I would say because Giannis missed the entire first round. Jalen Brunson, John. Yeah. It's still yes. hard, but yes. see, and yes. but they still made it. That's my thing. It's still hard to get there, and you like you found a way to get there. Like you're still good. So it, I'm this is a, they, they I think there is a little comp to the Kings of a couple of years ago where I think they caught a lot of teams by surprise with the pace last year. They were crazy with their offensive pace. The way Halliburton started the year, he was unbelievable. But what I don't think a lot of people talk about with Halliburton as talented as he is, is once he got hurt. And then he tried to come back. Is, he yeah. was not the same player I was at just all. About to say that, yeah. Not at all. And I'm not even talking about the defense, which is just not his strong suit. He's not a good mm -hmm. defender. Not good. But the shooting numbers went down drastically. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, but healthy now. Let's say let's say he's healthy going into the yeah, season. I, I, I just I'm not super high on that team. I mean, I, I think they can get in and be a top six team, but. In terms of winning a series, if they're going up against a healthy Bucks team, I don't think they win that series. I think I don't think they win the next year. I I just don't think I think they got a really for they got really fortunate last year. That's fine. That's I, yeah. But and you guys, the experience alone that they gained from that postseason, how is that not going to make you a better basketball yeah, team? Yeah, and I'll say this: team. I saw a clip of Siakam. Talk, they did like some voluntary workouts with the team, and uh, he was like talking to the guy, some of the young guys, like, "Hey." if you think we made it, like we haven't done anything, it takes a different level. You think like, cool because of last year we're here mm -hmm. and we're just going to be back. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And that's the champions. I mean, like, he's won yeah. Champion. And so I think that mindset's right. I mean, obviously Halliburton's a really special player player. Mm -hmm. I thought Nemhard had some really awesome moments, oh, yeah. especially when the Halliburton got hurt. Yeah. Um, and Siakam showed some nice things. Turner's in a contract year. Um, yeah. And they have a championship winning coach. Rick Carlisle won the championship yeah. with Dallas in 2011. So I, I just – I think there's people who are in a rush to put them into, like, hey, contention in the East or, like, in the upper echelon of the East because of last year. And my caution is what you were talking about, who they played in the playoffs last year. I'm almost to the point now where we have to go, like, from one to five. Yeah. Is that okay? If yeah, we yeah, because because yeah. now we're in that we're in that space where, where we're like we don't know yeah. where we want to put Orlando or the the Pacers. Yeah. Um. So let's so let's if, let's go one. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, definitely. one's gonna be Boston. One's Boston. Nice. Whoa, you guys! I'm not there with Boston. Actually, really? I think I think after last night. Guys. After last night. It's interesting. You really you, you, the, you think the Knicks are better? I love this conversation. Yeah, we're uh, know, here, can I tell you my Boston concerns for a second? Because we all, I think yeah. everyone agrees on this. They're one of the best teams in the league. Yes, one hundred percent. They, they, are nice. Porzingis is not ready for the season, and yeah. it. Let's yeah. let's just call it the way it is. Game we, changer. We keep talking about injuries on the injury prone guys. Porzingis. Porzingis is very injury prone. Now, they can live with Porzingis missing regular season games. They need him come playoff time. Mm -hmm. and, I guess you can go last year. Well, you really didn't. They won the finals pretty much without him. But um, I'm concerned. There is a little concern about the injury and him coming back from that. Horford, another year older. Mm -hmm. Okay. So th there's two guys, right? And they, they still have a lot of talent. Key pieces. Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tam. The thing that I think we should be talking about more with them, though. What? Dude, they've got, for a championship team, they've got a chip on their shoulder. People took shots at it's their fair. path to the finals. Jason Tatum did barely played on yeah. Team USA. He won yeah. didn't play. Yeah, he, he was a bench oh, yeah. warmer. And Jalen Brown wasn't even on the team. He was on the team. Yeah. And so, like, 
for a team that was as good as they were uh-huh. last year, won all those games, won a championship, th- they're not getting the respect of a champion. I think 100%. that is the yeah. best thing ever for a, Joe Mazzula to yeah. tell his team. Yeah. The, the Pep chip, Guardiola of the year. It, it, the chip on their shoulder has to be massive. And so I think there's going to be some extra motivation. I do have some concerns. And the Knicks are coming for him. I think with the Knicks, the one thing with them is their depth is just not good. <laughs> yeah, so they, they are to, top heavy, especially. To, to play devil's advocate, yeah. for, I mean, I think that the Celtics are going to be number one. Uh-huh. But if someone were to give the argument to New York, the two best players on Boston are Jason Tim and Jill Brown, of course, right? Mm-hmm. But um, the two best defenders on New York are the those wings, OG Ananobi and Mikhail Bridges. I'm not saying that they could completely stop Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, but they could definitely slow them down, force the other guys to step right. up. And that's why, I mean, if someone was to make the argument for New York, I think that would be their biggest one, is that New York matches up with Boston kind of well. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, and that's where I'm at. And again, I'm being a little prisoner of the moment because of what happened last night, right? Mm-hmm. But I also think what we saw last year without Bridges and then without one of the best shooting bigs in this league mm-hmm. now on this roster – I it just my impression of it would be like, oh, yeah, this is the best team. But then you do talk about their depth. They and lost I lost their best and shooter. And I do. Go, and, and, and that is a fair point as well. You say that, but they just gained a seven footer who mm-hmm. could shoot it just as yeah. well as Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah. And what that do, the spacing, what well, that does for oh, yeah. lanes for Brunson. And you think about what they did without Julius Randle last yeah, year, yeah. you know, when he wasn't playing and how so much it, success they still saw without him, right? And so I'm just like, now they have someone who, let's just say Cat is staying on the floor, but maybe he's not. He's getting in foul trouble like he is uh, when oh, he's immature. The During the playoffs, that I was know. so annoying. That's I thing. know, yeah. I know. So, so I guess my argument for New York is a little prisoner of the moment of – yesterday's trade um, and everything that went down. But I also think putting Boston right there is like absolutely makes sense. Fair. Like, why wouldn't I just do that? Yeah, And I think too, what I kind of, you can make a case to like Boston may not be pushing for the number one seed this year, you know, like right. taking it easy yeah, through the regular yeah. season. Poor Zing gets chill. Out. Like they could be strategic with it. They've got mm-hmm. great chemistry. They know what winning time is. Like they're yeah. gonna be one of the best teams in the East, regardless. So I don't think they have to go crazy and go. We have to get the number one seed. Like if they're number yeah. two, it's who cares? Like yeah, and I, I, for New York, I feel like talk about the bench. They come. I mean, I'm saying that completely, but they pretty like they d- they lost Divincenzo, huge bench piece. I think that's gonna force Deuce McBride to step up, and yeah. I think he. I'm not gonna say like their season depends on him, but he's one of the X factors for this team, if he can really step up to the role that DiVincenzo was last year because, or Josh Hart, when he came off the bench, was last year, I feel like they could make, like, be head-to-head. With yeah. Oh, I forgot they added a campaign, too. That's interesting. Um, Landry Shamit. There's some of these guys. I'm like, Tom Thibodeau's it, not playing these guys. I know, yeah. but it's still, yeah. yeah. We know Jalen Brunson's gonna get 40 yeah. minutes a night, and so it's like, it's like, I was like, yeah. I mean, sure, some scrappy guys that maybe can come off your bench, and if someone needs a second to breathe or anything, but, um, but yeah, I, I guess that would be the biggest concern is the roster construction for the depth for the New York Knicks. If you do want to talk about, um, what could be better, so I. Are we going to put Boston at one then? Uh, put Boston at one. Yeah, put Boston. Fine. Yeah, it's, 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 fine. it's the safest pick, right? It is. It, Nick's it is. at two. Nick's at two. Easy. Okay. Three. Are, you no. going, we, uh, are we going? We got Cleveland and Milwaukee. Where are we going? Philly. No, what are you oh, Philly. Oh, Philly. Oh, yeah, Philly. Oh, my three. God. Thank you. I mean, the, Phil, Philadelphia, could, they could maybe be a dark horse for the one seed. Ooh. Ooh. With the addition of Paul George kind of like replacing Tobias Harris. <sighs> I I Got love him, Maxi and B. Charity you guys, I love Paul George. I really do. Kayla Martin, they added. I I think I think it's fair though because of his track record and his history to also look at like okay, well if he is on the floor, I mean he is nasty, right? Like we know what he's capable right. of doing, but like how healthy of a year is he going to have? But then also, also you Embiid. there you go because yeah. I go I go the one two punch. Get, the reality is those guys aren't going to stay. They're going to miss games. Him and Embiid are going to miss games, and it's just they'll still be one of the best teams in the and East. They have Tyrese Maxey, yeah. and then um, what's going to happen come playoff time? 
one of those guys is going to be hurt and they'll be gone in the first or second round. Oh, really? Yeah. Already yeah. saying that? I mean, I mean, that has been like that's just it, it, it's been the be same. Wrong, is my thing. <laughs> like, I would love to be wrong. I love to see Embiid out there, but right. every year Embiid's limping around. It's like, are you okay? Like, can you continue this <laughs> game? And then so you know true. George faces similar issues. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just. You know, as a championship team, I, I don't see it. I mean, I get why they made the moves they did, but I, I'm not, no. I think I think they got a lot of extra motivation going. I mean, not like, they don't have, like, something that they have to, like, get revenge for, but, like, a lot of, like, energy going into the year because of the fact, like, they're, they're so hyped that they just added Paul George, who's a perennial all-star type of player, and they're like, oh, yeah, let's just go get this this year. I mean, I think that they're going to fight to stay healthy even more this year just because they think that this is this is the year to win. Yeah. But like fight to stay healthy every year, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's the it's the effort. Like like we we talked to Sabonis the other day, and I was I just said, isn't it a skill set to like stay healthy, right? Uh, like please tell me I'm right. And he said it just takes a lot of effort, and it's not just putting the effort into practicing your free throws or practicing that like jump shot, whatever it is the move you're working on. It's also putting the effort into your body and making sure that you're doing everything Perfect. perfectly. So yeah, you can stay on the floor. Mm -hmm. So okay, we'll put them three. I think three, yeah, cool. And then okay. like, you good with that? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of looking at their death chart. They have Andre Drummond as well, which is kind of like good he's not. Insurance. Yeah, like he, yeah, he's kind of like he's gonna be good enough to like hold the fort down if like Embiid is injured, but he's not Andre Drummond from like ten years ago. Right. I also just uh, Embiid's talented. We all admit that. Yeah. Yes. 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 Where are you going? He's just not fun. I, I can't imagine him being <laughs> fun to play with. Like, this yeah. is tough, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, he does have, like, doozies when, like, it matters. Like, I think, like, two years ago when they were in game seven against Boston, he had, like, five points or something. Oh, yeah, the Embiid yeah. Harden. Yeah. Yeah, when Vomit they just show, didn't yeah. show up. And it's, like, you you need him to show up in clutch time, and, like, he doesn't do that. And I just hope with the addition of George that Maxi doesn't lose his aggressiveness because that's the one thing with the Harden and Embiid era, and I know Maxi was younger, is it felt like when Harden played, it was like Maxi was kind of taking a backseat, mm -hmm, not being right. as aggressive. And I think Maxi is a very exciting player, Ooh, a very shit. crafty scorer, explosive. He needs to have, mm -hmm. like, a, no, you're a guy yep. and have that mentality. Be yeah. Also, through the draft, I know, like, the the size of the backcourt wouldn't be good, but I l really like the pick of Jeremy Kane to add a shooting presence. Yeah. He's from Sacramento, so yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a low bias. Likeable guy. Yeah. Too, yeah, but I mean, to add some shooting into their team, kind of, I'm not like a replacement for Tobias Harris, but to replace his corner presence, I mean, I I I really like that addition in the draft for and, them. And again, young, and so we mm -hmm. can we can see. But yes, I also and, really like him even as a human too. So. And I, I can't wait for it when Embiid finally does a TikTok with him. That's just gonna be the funniest <laughs> thing. That's just so like cute. The, the, like the, the most dull face. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing a dance. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. That's oh, funny. okay. Philly three, then four. You going Milwaukee? Yeah. You go Milwaukee. You're even uh, even Cavs Cavs guy over here. Side, I see. They haven't been doing that great. Besides Donovan Mitchell, I feel like they haven't. They don't have enough. Yeah, it's and it's hard. To, again, we are when Giannis is on that roster. I mean, you look at Dame as well, and like maybe they have more things that are like worked out this coming into this season. But I don't know. And for, for for Cleveland, I'm I know people have been saying this for a while, and I know that they resigned him, but I don't really like the fit of a front court between Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. Just the the shooting of that. Front and the switchability, the spacing of that front court, it's just, it's yeah. like, it's like ugly for me. You know what I mean? Like, I just really, yeah, don't. I know. I, I, I've, I really liked Evan Mobley. Um, and I feel like this could be a big year for him. Like, where, which way is he going to be? Is he just going to kind of stay what he is? Yeah. Um, because he, he's another guy that you look at and go, man, you have some defensive tools. Like, if you had more of an offensive, polished game, like, what could that, a polished offensive mm -hmm. game, what could that, what could that look like? Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like he doesn't really – he needs to, like, improve this year. He can't really stay stagnant because the team itself is becoming better. And, like, they kind of, like, went on that run last year where, where, like, we were, like, he, Cleveland could be a championship team. That win streak, yeah. But <laughs> then they kind of no, cooled I off. <laughs> yeah, of, of course he believed it. But, I like, they, they kind of cooled off, and then, like, they got injured in the – the second round is kind of okay. like and for me like you know 
I think that Cleveland, as an argument for Cleveland, Darius Garland and Evan Mobley both missed a big amount of time. Because yeah. he, Darius Garland only, like, broke his face, like, broke his jaw or something. And they still managed to go on that win streak and be a top seed in the Eastern Conference. Imagine if both those two were actually healthy during that time. Maybe it's because of the fact that they were hurt that Donovan Mitchell could get more ball situation and they wouldn't have to fight for the ball. But I mean, and then defensively last last year, were there were they still? Was that the year before that they were just like super powerful defensively, or yeah, was that last I, I year? I forget where they finished yeah. last year, but I mean they had when healthy, like mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I'll make a case for Milwaukee here. You just made the Cleveland case. Milwaukee, you think about la- Dame had a lot going on last year, like personally, like it, he's been family. He was getting adjusted to the new situation. Adjusted, like he he was away. You know, he's going through a divorce and like away from like kids. Like that's not an easy thing. Yeah. They also switched out their coach. Yeah. Yep, that's oh, yeah. first year coach. That's what I'm for saying. Doc Rivers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you know now, and I start thinking about my God. You know, Brooke Lopez is old. 36. Mm-hmm. Um, that's funny I say that because I am literally 36. <laughs> Actually, and <laughs> NBA standards. Um, yeah, yeah, and NBA. 100 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a seven foot big who has had back problems there in the past go. and they can wear and tear Mr. Stiffback. Um, and then, uh, you know, Middleton is the same thing. Like, as talented as he is, you just wonder how much he has left in the tank. Sure. Right. Um, yeah. And even injury. I mean, yeah. you talk about him and his injury history as well. And so. Then- so I mean, are you kind of go? Are you kind of down then on Milwaukee a little bit more? Like I feel like, I feel like they'll figure it out more with Dame, Giannis, Doc, and I say that because it just it felt yeah, you weird. Know what? I'm, out. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going Cleveland. Ahead. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm going Cleveland. And for me, it's because of the the people that they traded for uh, Damian Lillard. They lost both Grayson Allen and Drew Holiday, and mm-hmm. I know that. They're both really good perimeter defenders, and yes. we saw that all of last year. It's just the defense of Milwaukee was atrocious and they didn't even fix that in the draft by taking a guy like ryan dunn <laughs> yeah they they so what their off season i'm looking at their depth chart too so they had torian prince uh gary trent jr delon Wright. so some guys that have defensive mentality defense, exactly, yeah which, you know i like that, the gary trent jr that's something they gotta fix their defense was yeah awful last mm-hmm. year well, perimeter and, defense. And perimeter. Yeah, perimeter. Yeah. Interior, yeah, yeah. Well, they got yeah, well, And that was the thing. That they put those guys in some tough spots. Like, starting Beasley and Dame last year, I'm like, pick your, who do you want to hunt? Yep. We can hunt either one. Yep. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I like Cleveland. So, so what do you like? Cavs at four. Cole? I mean, I kind of feel – I, I kind of agree. Cavs four. Maybe – Indiana five, Milwaukee six. Ooh, because we like Cavs fan here, We're, are, are, are you, you're still putting Milwaukee ahead of them, or what? I would put Milwaukee ahead of them because last year I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like how uh, Darius Garland played. I didn't like how Evan Mobley played. I just feel like like nothing was like fitting how I wanted it to. So, yeah. long, so you're still down? Uh, yeah, I'd say they're down. Okay, except for like Donovan Mitchell, I feel like he had a great he had a great season, great playoff run. And just like but I feel like everyone else just disappointed. You know what I'm eager to see though? We what? keep forgetting with Cleveland new head coach Kenny Atkinson, who's oh, you know yeah, he's getting yeah. an opportunity. Fair. Um, and you know when Kenny was head coach at Brooklyn, you know they they that overachieved the in many ways. Team. Yeah, and the yeah, <laughs> they they played hard for him too. Yeah, you know, they, like yeah. he set a standard. And you know he's a good he's an offensive minded guy too. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of spots he could put. You know. Evan Mobley and what? How can they get creative with that backcourt? So, okay, I think I'm higher in Cleveland than I thought. So then let's go. Tell me if you guys like this. Cavs four, uh, Milwaukee five. Mo- okay, okay, let's go Bucks five. Let's just go. Okay, fine. Let's go Bucks five. Let's go Pacers six. Pacers six. And then Orlando seven. Right. Oh wait. Yeah. Right. Do we yeah. want to put Orlando six? Oh, no, no, you can't. Really? You're you're I, down on Indiana. I, 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 I feel like the problem I have with Milwaukee is that they have a lot of older vets that are good, but they're aging. Like Giannis, aging. He, uh, like Giannis, you don't see him as like an old guy, but he's almost thirty. And he, it seems like the last few years he's getting hurt. Yeah, like he hey, got hurt in. Uh, yeah, he got hurt in Miami series. He got hurt in the yep. Indiana series, and they cost them the series in both of them. And it's kind of like Brook Lopez getting older. Dame is old as well, even though like he can still shoot the ball really well. He's kind of like good, but like 
that's his only good he's attribute. He's lost a lot of his athleticism. This is it for this group, honestly. I mean, I, know, this I, is, I think uh, this is a this, huge... Yeah, this could be their last year together. Okay. So but also, I feel like this is a big year for management also because Giannis has not been afraid to say that if Milwaukee is not winning, he is out of there. Yeah, like, yeah. I, you know... Yeah. What? Giannis has had a lot of say there. He's okay. had a lot of say. His brother gets I, I to be at that, the end of the bench. I don't know that all of his things have been Are successful. True? So right. it's like, you know, at some point, it's like, you can make the noise. We've made some of the moves. We've been aggressive. And hey, we he got have, rid of Drew Holiday. How'd that turn out? Does he have a no trade clause or anything? I don't know. I forget what his I'm deal not. is. And it, who knows? Yeah, that would be a crazy Bradley Yeah, he, he He's kind of like the lead GM of the East. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but people don't talk about it the same way. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, because everyone looks at Giannis as like the nicest guy. Uh -huh. Blah, blah, blah. They're seeing the true colors. <laughs> I just tried smoothie for the first time. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you have all the pop culture yeah. part down. Um, okay, so then are we good with the East or are, are we, we? So we're putting uh, like this. Uh, this is what we're saying: Boston one, mm -hmm. yeah. New York two, right? Uh, Philadelphia three, okay. Um, Cleveland four, Cleveland Cat, four, yep. uh, Milwaukee, Milwaukee five, five, Indiana six, Orlando seven, okay. Miami eight, Atlanta nine, Toronto ten. Uh, Chicago 11. Uh, what did we put at 12? Was it Charlotte? It Charlotte was Charlotte. 12. Let's do Charlotte. 13 Wizards, 14 Pistons, 15 Nets. Good job. I think that's, that's pretty a pretty good. Memory. Memory. That, that's yeah, pretty that's good. That's really good. Great job. And now we, we got one more. Okay. Let's go to the West. <laughs> I, to I'm, the West. This one's going to be, I, I don't know how we're going to come to a consensus on the West. Yeah. <laughs> this this really is, like, there's so many Just good like, teams. Who's the, like, this one we should start at one for sure. You think? Yeah. 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 This is so oh, that's hard. That's fun. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. One. Yeah. Yes. Let's get the good stuff out okay. of the way. Uh, okay. I mean, Oklahoma City is number one. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Because yeah. They, they literally, their two biggest needs were a uh, size, rebounding strength. Back up for Chet Holmgren, Isaiah Hardenstein. Boom. Perimeter defense, shooting, spacing, Alex Caruso. Boom. Done. I mean, if if, this, if we recorded this 24 hours ago, I would have sent uh, Minnesota. But wow. Now. Ooh. You think they lost the cat trade? I, I don't know. You, you can't say because it's like Julius Randle, I can see. Like, I don't think the defense is going to be as good. Well, in the Julius fit, Randall. it's just so weird. Like, you could stretch yeah. out Cat, yeah. but you can't, you can't necessarily do that for Julius stretch Randall. out Julius Randle. Just the spacing between Gobert and Randle. I, like, I thought, I thought uh, though, I always get weird because I always thought the spacing with even Gobert and Cat was going to be weird. And I just laughed. And then I was like, oh, wow, they found a way. But that's also because Cat kept um becoming a better better and better at being able to stretch the floor and being more confident and like always having that as part of his game but then it be um really became more of his identity so now i look at this with julius randall and i yeah it it minnesota is still gonna be a very good yeah team. they're definitely, gonna be really good yeah. but and i i, I don't bench. think that trading cat was like a getting better type of deal I, yeah i agree with that i don't think anyone can say today that the Wolves got better. And oh, yeah. people, uh, the, the, you know, the spin on this, and I've already seen it, is like, well, you know, from a flexibility standpoint, like, they, you know, fix some cap things. It could short-term and long-term flexibility. And, you know, DiVincenzo's three-point shooting, that's something they need. They've liked him for a long time. And I'm not denying that, like, Dante. Dante could fit on, on like, any team and in the league. Yep. Like, he's one of those right. blue guys, confident, all that stuff. But, like, I... I'm not a, I, I'm a Kings fan, right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel for Wolves fans today because they made it to the conference finals last year, something they had not done in 20 years. And they were on the cusp of maybe being a, mm. a championship team or getting there last year. And like you just said, they, a lot of people thought maybe they could be a number one seed this year, yet days before camp, they make this trade, sending Cat for Randall, who, by the way, is not going to be able to play at the start of the season. He's mm -hmm. hurt, shoulders, like his shoulders, yeah. so he's not healthy. Well, they, um, and I, and I'm like, what is his role going to be? There's some talk like, well, you know, Nas Reed's going to get more of an opportunity. I'm like, yeah, for now. But are you telling me you think Julius Randall's going to be chill coming off of the bench? Because I don't think he's going to be chill right. with that. And then, do you want to be starting him? Does the spacing work? Yep. Those are questions. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just, to me, they got worse today than they were yesterday. For me, I, I feel like this trade, like, they were, they needed to move off from either Cat or Gobert in the next few years because yes. of the money. It's just, but they didn't have to do it now is my Yeah, point. yeah, they yeah. should have waited and seen, like, with the chemistry and everyone getting better. Group. Because, like, 
yeah, they kind of like in the conference finals they, they didn't do well, but like I feel like that uh, if they went back they would have done better. But obviously we won't be able to see that now because yeah, it's, like the it's whole, not the same team. The ownership situation is so ugly. It's weird. Like the whole Alex Rodriguez like they didn't turn in the papers to buy it on time or something and. The Minnesota current owner is just so notorious for not paying the luxury tax at all. He's not going to reach out of his own pocket to pay the <laughs> players. And it, it feels inevitable that Cat was going to be traded at one point in time. And it, it's just like the the new CBA especially is not going to allow them to be able to pay yeah. all Cat, yeah, Gobert. I, get that. I yeah. honestly, I do get that part of it. I, it's something that like I still think they could have waited on. That because the thing I said when we talked about this last night, I said – Wait, wait, you're telling me you couldn't go around the league and get more for Cat? That is true. Because you right. could, like, think about it. And Definitely for a team could've. that we are talking about in the Western Conference that accomplished what they did last year, and you could just make certain tweaks, the right tweaks, to put your team over, but instead you are just making sure that you are going to, you know, save money or whatever it is that you're trying to do with those contracts. I just think. It's the most ridiculous. Like you were so close, and you screwed it all up. Now I do think, from their standpoint, if you're looking at it from an optimistic standpoint, where they go, oh, we don't think we got that much worse. Randall's going to be motivated. He plays tough. He he adds an element of toughness that maybe they didn't have. Uh, I think they're very big believers in McDaniel's offensive mm -hmm. potential, and like can if with more responsibility, could he turn into like a legit score on that team? Nas Reed expanded role. We're still going to be really good. Oh, and Ant's going to take a step. Yeah, yeah I mean that's that's how they, they view Anthony it. Edwards, yeah, so that's how they view it. Yeah, and I mean they. It's not like they're off season. Like this was the only move they added. Rob Dillingham, yeah. who can yeah. kind and, of fit into. But be you also you're you're banking on Mike Conley staying healthy that's, at 38 years old. That's but the thing. even if he doesn't, then I think Dante might be able to. Well, that's what I was well. even saying too. I was like, I was like, you know, Dante saw. Uh, uh, <laughs> His role is now going to change, you know, obviously if he's coming off the bench instead of, but like you put him in that position uh, as a point guard when he's not a true point guard. But then at the same time, you yeah. look at Anthony Edwards, That's who was saying. bringing up the ball last year anyway. And it was like, well, no, you want him off the ball. You want to make sure that you're creating for him as well. And he's not having to do all the work every single time. So I, I do think having Dante DiVincenzo is huge and you're losing cats shooting, but you're on, you're adding Dante DiVincenzo shooting shot 40% from three last right. year. And it's not like jelly fam. Nas Reed is a bad shooter. I mean, it's, he can't, Step yeah. up to what Cal yeah. was, but he is definitely going to take a big leap this season, just like he did last year. And I mean, a solid nine man of those guys like Conley, Edwards, mm -hmm. uh, McDaniel's, Randall, uh, Gobert, and then off the bench you got Nikhil Alexander Walker, like yeah. DiVincenzo. Nas so are you putting Minnesota or Dallas at two? Minnesota. Okay. Over Dallas. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. all agree. Okay, sees one. Okay, sees one. one. Right, yeah. right. Dallas, Dallas, or I'm sorry, no, Minnesota, uh, two. Minnesota, Minnesota two, two, Dallas yeah. three. One thing on OKC, what I oh. love too. I, I just I think the hard sign pickup like you're talking about is big, but I, I'm what Chet can look like next year. Oh yeah, you know, when he doesn't have all that responsibility, like they they want to put the ball in his hands more. He is a talented player. I mean, they just have defense everywhere too. I mean, you think of the, the they have a lineup. They have a roster that includes Lou Dort and Alex, Alex Caruso, Caruso, SGA, tough, and, uh, you know, Case and Wallace. I mean, no, you yeah. got some, uh, you got some yeah. legit defense defenders yep. out there that can switch, be physical, and ball hawks. It, it, it was, it. it was all built from the ground up. Yeah. It's not like they're gonna struggle to maintain like chemistry with each other because if there's one thing OKC does not have to worry about, it's chemistry. Yeah. Like yeah. even if they lose. 82 games, the guys are going to like each other. Yeah, no and, matter I, and what. the growth from like someone like Jalen Williams is going to be interesting because he didn't have a good playoffs. Like It looked like for him, his first playoffs felt like, oh, yeah. okay, maybe this was a, a lot for him. The experience, but, though. Yeah, experience matters. Um, so, OKC won. We, say Min we all say Minnesota. Minnesota, too. too. Sure, yeah. Then and let's do Dallas. Man, you know, you know are you higher on I'm Dallas? I'm not high on Denver. That's why I'm not putting Well, no, no, no. We're not there with Denver, okay. but Dallas, You know, I, I, after mm. last night, I'm going to say so, Last night, I was like for sure one two uh, OKC Minnesota, and after last night I'm like so stuck on two just because I just think you can make a case for about five teams to be honest. Just for me, like people are like I know Dallas made it to the finals, but yeah. so many people are forgetting that they were the five seed in the regular season, and I'm not saying that they're gonna like take a drop off like 
from the playoffs, but I don't think that they're going to be. Defense got better, and you added Clay, and not to say Clay is going to make your defense better, but he's going to add yeah. another dimension to your offense, yeah. though. I right? mean, he, he's not like 2018 Clay, but he's no, still good. But that's why that's why I'm like, screw his defense. You know, I'm not even talking about his defense. I'm more talking about him as an offensive I mean, player with Kyrie, yeah, right. with Luka. I, I think when I look at Dallas, uh, you bring up the point there with fifth seed. Well, you got to remember, too, like Kyrie missed a lot of time last that's year. That's true. And, and then he came back late January. They make the trades for Gafford and P.J. Washington. Washington. And then all of a sudden, they got red hot at the end of the year, right? Uh, and they had a great r- run. Uh, you know, they lose Derek Jones Jr. I think that's a tough one. But I love the addition of Quentin Grimes and Najee Marshall's a dog. Oh, yeah. Clay, yeah. the Clay one I'm fascinated by because on one hand, I'm like, oh, he's going to get so many opportunities because, you know, Kyrie and Luka garner so much attention. At the same point, he's so used to playing like this motion offense where like like he's gonna get the ball where around screens he's right. not used to like standing around watching like Luca just do his thing. Yeah. And that's that can be tough. It's a tough adjustment for players when you're that's used fair. to like the ball like whipping around. Now, maybe Dallas is like, hey, we have to make sure we have a little more movement this year to get Clay involved and make sure he's happy. He's an emotional player. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's something Jason Kidd adds in. Yeah, exactly. But like and then I, I Derek Lively impressed me so much. Oh my God. And yeah. not only with like I, I didn't know much about him uh when he played at Duke, but you know, you look at his numbers like what's he gonna impact in year one? And yeah. then he you know, he had moments where he's in foul trouble a lot, but as this year went on, he got better and better. Yep. And to think w- he lost his mom. Yes. Yeah. Like in the middle he's an orphan. He was an orphan. He yeah. just now he's an orphan. Tragic. Like the trauma. Uh, I, I can't imagine, right? And so um I, I'm just I'm high on him. And so yeah, I think that you know, it all comes down to this. Luca just get in shape. If, if Luca yeah. is in decent she's already great when he's not in shape but if he can be in like legit basketball shape and locked in they're gonna be they're crazy gonna be really i mean but they're that, tough to guard that's like the it's like a, like a circle with dallas like all the time it's just like luca comes into the season yep. un, un unhealthy comes into camp unhealthy un in shape and then he takes time to get in shape throughout the season and like in like december ish now he's finally in like luca form and then you know, he goes crazy. Yeah, like just the cycle repeats, but yep. like you, just like you were talking about for Boston, I do feel like Dallas has a chip on their shoulder this year, especially just because coming off of a finals loss, it wasn't even close. They like D- Boston came up to a three zero lead, <laughs> yeah. and it was just like okay, it, Boston was just the best. Like they were just better, they were yeah. the Why best not? team, you know, like yeah. in the league. And um, at times when they would play with their food, it was like, what are you doing? Just like yeah. take care of business. And so I, I, that's why like when I do look at Dallas, I'm like, they still like, they showed how good of a team that they could be, you know, not just, it wasn't just like Luca, everyone stare at Luca. It was like everyone playing these different type of roles and being able to also like contribute. It was it, on both ends of the floor. Yeah. Are we all agreeing Dallas three? Da- I'm, sure. I'm sure I'm fine with okay. Dallas Okay. So then Denver four? Uh, or Phoenix, I, I, Phoenix I honestly four? think uh, this is going to be a debate. I, th- I think Sacramento Ooh. could be four. Oh! No, that's where I was going. Okay, I think the Kings okay. are four. I'm not high on Denver this year. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because Contavious Caldwell Pope was a real integral Huge. part of their rotation. And now they're relying on Christian Brown to se- step up into that role. Sure, he was really good in their championship run. But is he ready to be that guy? On, not, I mean, I'm not the guy, but like in that role on a championship contender team to be like that starting that's why i'm kind of lower on denver okay i completely agree i mean Jokic to me is going to keep them in the top six yeah but that, so oh, yeah. in that yeah, to me yeah, yeah. that's why like it's hard for me to even think sacramento in that fourth spot like i can see them sacramento in, the, in top in the top six but in that fourth spot why are you two so high on that because i think the addition of demar is just going to be good and also i like devin carter coming in from draft i think he's gonna be a good like bench piece obviously like it depends on like what the starting five is going to be i think i want keon ellis as the shooting guard malik monk off the bench because when keon ellis was starting like in the second half they were like a top five defensive rated team yeah but i i think that like especially with denver getting worse phoenix is kind of like i don't know yeah like it it, and then like (laughs) la got worse Uh uh-huh the other LA didn't do anything. Golden State kind of got worse as well. It's kind of like they're all of these teams are just like in a bucket, and then yeah. it's kind of like 
we don't know what is going to happen. I, I think if healthy King's ceiling is, they could be the number two seed. Um, I think. Whoa! Whoa! Wait! Wait! wait, wait. Yeah. I said their ceiling is the number. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, okay. I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, number, but if I, the Randall I, experiment doesn't work, I like I like the four seed for Sacramento. Um, I think to your point. Go back to last year. Keon Ellis wasn't really part of the rotation. A little bit early, then not. Yeah. They didn't really put him in until like late February, early March, and it was it transformed their defense. Yep. Right. Him and Fox are just deflection monsters. Keegan is a good defender. And I think the addition of DeMar, I mean, it's just a guy that can go get you a bucket, get to the free throw line, his playmaking, his maturity on, off the court. I think offensively, they're going to be tough to go. Fox can score 30 on you. DeMar can score 30 on you. We've seen Keegan have big nights. Sabonis is going to command attention just because being such a threat in so right. many ways. And the offense kind of just runs through him. As yeah. Well. And they have so many playmakers on that Malik team. Malik off the bench. Yeah. And so it, last year they should have won 50 games. If they, they win 50 games last year, Malik doesn't get hurt or, or even hurt her at that point. Yeah. So I, I look at their team. If healthy too, like their depth is – it's not bad because yeah. let's just say Keon's starting. Well, then you got Herter and Monk and Lyles off the bench. Devin Carter, if he well, comes back. Lyles is going to miss time. Yeah. yeah. So um, – I just think they've got the pieces to be a really well balanced team, and their weakness last year was more so I thought offensive creation at yep. times. Yeah, and I think they checked that box. Size is still going to be a concern depending on the game. That that. But. I was about to say like the for so, for a team who's like literally in the twenty twenty three season they were record breaking offense, and the fact that they. They got, like, we know how good their offense can be. And a big question was the defense, and I feel that they really got better at the defense. Yeah. And so the offense, like, it's just like a light switch. Like, they, they could flip that switch and turn the offense on in, like, a minute. And that's, like, they got better on both sides. Yeah. I agree with that. Because I think even a lot of people like to compare the, you know, Harrison Barnes. Um, oh, you get this upgrade with DeMar DeRozan even defensively, right? Because Harrison Barnes, what? he lacked on the defensive end um there's going to be times that there's matchups for damar that just don't work out and yeah. that these smaller guards do try to hunt him out yeah but i do think you have enough help yeah. um whether it's from other perimeter players yeah. and or just even going on the inside it's not like domas that's the thing he might not be your typical rim protector but he's a beast he's in the paint tough. and he can at least you know um alter a shot and then finish off the play with grabbing the rebound. And yeah. I think we saw a lot of that. And a lot of people don't talk about that enough around I the league. Thank you. Also, we, we talked to Kevin O'Connor about this because, you know, he's always anti Sabonis. <laughs> and I'm like, everyone talks about Sabonis' defense. One, he plays really hard. He's not the longest guy, so he's not going to block shots. Like, he has some physical limitations. We can acknowledge that. But the biggest thing you could do on defense is when the opponent misses, is get the ball. Yep. Yeah. Finish it's off the play. He gets, yeah, he it, he you gets get a stop. You don't get a rebound. It doesn't matter. The guy is the best defensive rebounder in the league. So, um, I don't know. I just look up and down. I, I, I like their squad. I think they're poised to be really, especially in the regular season, too, because, you know, knock on wood here, but, like, you know, they, they, they have guys that are pretty tough that will play through being dinged up throughout a season. The stat I love about Demar, he's played in ninety three percent of his the games in his career. He doesn't miss time, you know. Um, the two guys who led the NBA in minutes last year, Sabonis and Demar Derozan. So, um, you know, these guys are going to play. Yeah. I think the Kings are too a team that they take the regular season serious. They understand like they don't want to be taken. Um, they don't want to. I, they definitely blew some games last year, but like I think other teams are like, ah, we don't care. We'll just finish wherever. I think the king. It's important for the Kings yeah, to get right. into a good and spot. A if seat. we're talking about like the the interior, I mean, if we're Devin Carter, I know he's six two, whatever. He does not play his size. No, he, he yeah, he. I de- just don't factor him in because I don't know when Same. he's coming back. Like, like is it February is it? And January? what if it's is and it even? March? But you guys, you have to remember, even if he did come back in February, it's like, what are you expecting out of a rookie that was just injured yeah. right? right you know it, 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 his first year in the nba i'm not expecting him to just like pop off and do what he but needs to do can he just be the athletic freak he is right and yeah. defend that's all. yeah because he can guard a six eight six nine guy at six two and that's like he's long a, yeah he's long it's a he's huge asset cool. to have yeah so are we all 
putting the Sacramento the Kings, Kings at four? four? Uh, why not? I, I don't why hesitate. Not? I don't You're hesitate. not. I think you chose it, so I think. I yeah. Why not? Why yeah, not? Yeah, just but, put them at four. See what happens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go. Oh, you said why not? I like that. Okay. 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 I, I four. say four seed, 50 plus one. Sure. Wow. There you go. The lowest dead could You'd fall think we're in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, I mean, I think Denver could fall. Here's my thing with Denver. They'll shape up at the playoffs? No, it's I the Denver know. Nuggets. Like, it's, it, you say that. Jo, Jam, is Jamal Murray okay? Are we, uh, like, we saw him in the well, playoffs. In the Olympics. We saw him in the Olympics. Is he all right? I, Everything hinges on what kind of support are they going to get. Last two years, we talked about KCP, the lim- losing KCP. The year before, Bruce Brown. These are like key guys that were part of like a championship team. You know, even someone like Reggie Jackson. I'm not going to act like he's like the greatest player ever, but like he's just a good veteran like yeah. role player. They had to give him the Washington, the like clear space. And what what For did they seconds. do? They added Westbrook. Okay, I mean, I, w- interesting. Does that scare anybody? No. So I, I think a lot is going to hinge on. All right, what's Michael Porter going to be this year? Can he Max take a step? Like you know, maybe there's pressure on Aaron Gordon to be more of an offensive presence too. I don't know, but yeah, I, I think five is probably fair. For okay, uh, so then Phoenix after them though? Like, yeah, are you? Yeah, I go. F- yeah, Phoenix six. I mean, who else is there? Like if that clump of the Pacific. Well, got it right here. I'm gonna say this about Phoenix, and I. I you could make a case for Phoenix being higher too. I, you know, um, I they think just, they we, just got no depth. They don't. And <laughs> last year, here's what I say: is like last year they were the sixth seed. Yeah. We talk about them. They were like they're a playing team. Yep. They were the sixth seed with Beal being injured, All Booker the time. being injured. Not KD though did play seventy plus games. So you know that was impressive. And for, for me, like they had Booker running the one. All like pretty much all last year, they just didn't fit Devin right. Booker. But now they have Tyus, Tyus Jones, Jones yeah. who's like. But you know, you're still gonna want the ball in those guys' hands at the end of the game. But having someone like Tyus Jones, who's to like manage, he doesn't turn the ball over yeah. at all. He doesn't yeah. turn the ball over. And I mean, Pat, I'm not gonna like sit here and say that. I mean, Devin Booker and Bradley Beal, they aren't really the best defenders, and they got Ryan Dunn in the draft, who, in my opinion, is the best perimeter defender in the draft. I think Milwaukee should have gotten him, but Phoenix took him. Whatever. I think that he's going to play good minutes on this team just as a guy he because he doesn't need to score the ball he has his kevin Bo- kevin durant right Devin booker bradley Beal. know I mean, your role with yeah, this roster he's gonna lock up i mean no, he's not gonna like clamp a uh, really good guards like but he's gonna play his role and you know stop some good guards and let give the ball to his best player so you got race o'neill mason plumley yeah so Ty okay, Jones. Nurkic. Um, Nurkic is not, but like I, Plumlee's not bad, like to have if necessary. But yeah, I mean, there's gonna be lineups where like maybe they just go small, and we saw that last year. Nurkic gets played off the floor, you know. Um, so uh, it's just that that talent. I mean, if Booker can stay relatively healthy, healthier than he was last year, and KD can be what he, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I think that range for them to me is like four to six. Okay, but let's just shove them in That's that six okay. spot six right spot, now. Yeah. yeah, but also. Can I say one more thing yeah. about this? Yes. I feel I'll, like if this um they also have one of the best three point defense guys in the league, Grayson Allen. Yeah, so that's right. We always talk about how their bench is super bad, but they don't need bucket getters off their bench. They have yeah. those three, and I feel like they have good defensive hounds off the bench that they could use. They have Ryan Nunn, Grayson Allen, also Royce O'Neal. I feel like Phoenix may be a sneaky take up Denver. Kind of spot. figure it yeah. out a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, and again, that's assuming everyone's going to stay healthy too. Yeah. And in like you said, Durant played seventy yeah, and games he's last year too. And he's, yeah, yeah, fair. It's, I mean, yeah. Can we pause for two seconds? I have to pee really bad. Oh, I was gonna the, hold it, but we. I, ooh, <laughs> let's talk crap about him while he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry. You want to bring us back in? So, if we're putting Phoenix at six, okay. If we're going over to seven now, I would say Clippers. Really? You want to go Clippers? Yeah. Um, I'm not really high on the Clippers this year. I'm back. really low on the Clippers. Now, now here, here's the thing about the Clippers for me. I'm kind of like, I'm a Kawhi guy. I like him a lot, and I also kind of like the Clippers, so I'm going to be high on them. But, like, with them losing Paul George, it's kind of like they have a hole that they have to fill. But you're a Kawhi guy, but is he even going to be on the floor? Yeah, like, let's I, I hope so. Procedures again. <laughs> like, I, I, I hope so. But, like, I feel like, like when those three, like when James Harden... Kawhi and Paul George were on the court together. They were good, but the problem is, is that Paul George and Kawhi would be injured every other game, 
So and, just, and like even with yeah. load management, it still didn't work out. And like I think they're good, but it's like they have to move on eventually. Are they, we? Oh what? I mean, the, the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh okay. wait, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, 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 definitely. I well, I, I mean, mean, they they they. Could I would put case. them ahead, Phoenix. They okay. Ooh, yeah, that's interesting. I, mean, I would I was put them say ahead. You could make them a, a a case for top six for them. Um, they. Had everybody hurt last year. They played like 30 plus guys on the team at one point, still one of the best defensive teams in the league. And, and that speaks to the culture that Taylor yeah. Jenkins has built. Right. And and we literally, like, the injuries last year were kind of a blessing in disguise because nobody would have seen how good Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams were this year. <laughs> now both guys are hurt. And, well, I mean, well, that's right. I mean, they're gonna, but yeah. you're, you're so right, though, with yeah. the opportunities some of these guys yeah. have, but also because of the standards of this organization and what they expect of these guys out the court. It doesn't matter if you wear, are wearing a G League jersey or if you're in an NBA jersey, you've got to play the same, like when you're out there. So, yeah. And then John ja Morant, obviously. Ja. I, that right there alone is yeah, like, we know what he can do Brandon as an individual. Clark's bad. Yes. I was like, thing. what's the fit if, like, we have, because we know Jaw's play style is to drive into the rim. But what's that going to look like if you have a seven foot guy who can't really space the floor in the paint? Think about how we got another seven footer who can. Who, yep. Well, he likes to think he can't, Jaron Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I think he can. Yeah, he, he, he has can. moments where he definitely can. And last year, it was it's so tough to judge him by last year because it was like, I feel like he was their offense at times. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. But ja Gigi. but Jaw's ability not only to get into the paint, but like when no one can stop him in the paint, that's the thing. That's the difference of like, oh, what is he gonna do? He's gonna have to pass out. No, this guy can score at the rim. Throwing lobs to Edie. He can get to the free throw there. line. You know, like there's gonna be so many and then you're exactly right too, though. It's like he can also dish it off and or find the open man, but there's gonna be so much opportunity for John Morant to be as explosive as he was. In my opinion, I think he will be. Also, like, I think there's, you know, I think this, there's people who have forgotten about John Moran. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, and, and, and that's kind of good, like, for good reason, because he did get injured, at, like, in the middle of the year, missed the rest of the season, and he also was out for the first 25 games. Yeah. So he, he didn't play last year, which is kind of the reason why Memphis didn't make the play in. Yeah. But now that he's back, hopefully he doesn't get injured again. But I guess we'll see how... Yeah, I, I the mean, team fits. I, I think they are, they have a case for the top six. I mean, but. we I know we put Sacramento at four and Denver at five, but like I completely forgot about Memphis. Ooh, like, so what are you I trying might, to say? I think I'm putting Memphis four and Denver five. Okay. I mean, You're putting Memphis that yes, see, because I, they, when Jaw was healthy, those two seasons when Jaw was healthy, they were the two seed back to back. Oh, that's years. right. Okay, just to be clear, let's oh, we cause raising we, his hand. You know, it's it's funny. The king, people make fun of the king. You were the three seed and won 48 games. And I feel like they get clowned for that a little bit. Uh, they do. Well, Memphis was a two seed that year. They weren't that much better. Like, yeah. it, it was a weird year in the West. So I'm not going to yeah. put that. I, I, I think they're going to be better. I think there's so many people that may be sleeping on them because they were near the bottom of the standings last year. But I also don't think they're going to be all of a sudden propelled to the top of near right. the top of the West either. I think well, they're going to have to prove it. The last time we saw that team healthy, that's where they were. So I'm not going to assume that they now. Right. It's different, though. I mean, they had Steven Adams, too. They had Yeah, Brandon I don't Clark. understand that trade at all. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to be different, but I do think Ja is, you know, he could have a monster year mm -hmm. this year. I think right. he is ready to go. I think the fact that we haven't heard his name a lot. Yeah, this and Anthony Edwards kind of took his chain, right? Yeah. yeah, he did. Okay, if you want to move, if you want to move Memphis to the fifth seed, fine, you can put him there. But I, I even that, I don't feel confident with that. i I'm still. I think seven is appropriate. Yeah, I, I, I think seven really? for Memphis. Yeah, I'll say ceiling. I'll give you a ceiling that he they could. Yeah, be ceiling. So, definitely, yeah, ceiling. Yeah. They can be with Sacramento. Four. Yeah, okay. they want to go four ceiling. Crazy. All right, ceiling four, but like keep seven, Memphis I'm at fine. seven. I, can we put them over Phoenix? I think. Oh, I mean, me just mm. you can for fun. I mean, I, mean, I don't. For, yeah, for like, fun. Like, that's I the think thing. that Memphis is a better constructed roster than Phoenix, especially because literally they have so many guys that could step up at any time. I mean, you of course you got John Morant, but also you got Desmond Bay and you got Marcus Smart. Even I know he can't. And we that offensive guy, but. And we talked about how Kevin Durant is a year older, and we just don't know, you know, what that is necessarily going to mean with some of the track record of the other years of injuries and everything. So that's close. Sure, it, because it's the Western Conference. Yes, you could pretty much put anyone anywhere, but let's let's I, put Memphis six and Phoenix seven. Seven, and then again, the Clippers eight. Can we just acknowledge 
Phoenix had all those injuries last year, and they were still top six. Yeah, that, that is true. You know, right, like yeah. they can't. And did we watch Kevin Durant with Team USA? He That's may be a year so older, true, but guess yeah. what? I, we got oh, with Devin some Booker. of these guys. It may not matter. That okay, much. fine. We're gonna put yeah, Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix six right, Phoenix and Memphis six. seven. Yeah. Memphis seven. And then a are we going? I mean, are we going oh. LA? Clippers, Clippers, eight, Clippers eight, maybe eight. Houston. Where are we putting Golden State though? And I'm not Lakers, high. Though. I'm not high. Nine. The Lakers and uh, Golden I State, or are they just the, like I, bottom I, the barrel? No, I, I, I like think. I like the Lakers more than the Clippers going into the year because mm. if we're, I think it's fair to assume that Kawhi is not going to stay healthy that. this year. Yeah. And I don't think he's ready for camp. Like, no, he's, yeah. he his knee. They took him out of Team USA, and yeah. maybe that was a business like, but. It was because he got hurt. Yeah. And I don't trust James Harden at this point in his career to be that guy to will a team to a guaranteed playing spot. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, I, I think it's either going to be the Clippers or the Lakers that don't make the don't make the play in. Okay. So I'm, I'm higher on the Lakers than the Clippers, definitely. Same. Mm. I'm higher. I'm, I'm still so high on LeBron James. I think anytime you want to count him out, it's just like, I know he's had to adjust his game, and obviously he's not as explosive at getting to the rim, but he's still – very strong at getting to the he's rim. And he's LeBron James. And he's yeah. LeBron James. It's but I, I think that, like, I know, like, we've been, like, a lot of people have been saying this, like, for the last few years. But, like, he is a year older. And I feel like now he's, a, yeah, but I think now he's starting to enter, like, the end, the, like, the twilight years of his career. Especially now with starting to play with Bronny and stuff. And we don't know how yeah. he's he, going to be in the rotation. I feel like. How many minutes Bronny is playing a night, if he plays any minutes, is going to determine how well the Lakers do. And I, for me, like listening to Mind the Game and the Old Man of the Three both podcasts, JJ Redick is super smart. If we're if we're listening to his game, yep. and he released that starting lineup, and he was like, "Oh, the reason why I'm starting that five is because they won what thirty they they won like thirty nine and thirteen, I think, during with that lineup as their starting five, and it's just like." Yeah, I mean, he's. I think he's a super smart guy. I really trust him to be that coach of this team. And I'm interested to see how JJ could put like AD in different positions to um, to get the best out of him. I think the Lakers just never found a good rhythm with Darvin Ham. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, oh you know, God. one thing AD like people <laughs> talk about him being fragile, but last year he was not. He he played a lot of games. It's fair. So um, I, I you know if you believe. If you put any stock into like pre training camp vibes, you know, Rob Polinka saying like the energy in this building has not been this good in years. Good and, for them. Um, we'll see what JJ can do. Cause I do think JJ's a smart guy, but it's also, you know, it's, it's coaching LeBron is a different task. And JJ is also, it's one thing to host a podcast and talk about basketball. It's another thing to deal with like personalities the politics and personalities yep. and ownership management lebron and, and agents. getting people to respect you while also trying to like be respect or be their friend or whatever but like respecting you as a coach like yeah, yeah, that's why that's, yes. I've, I've heard some reports of like how jj reddick is gonna like get his respect because imagine like you're a star player like you're anthony davis and a guy who's never been an all-star who averaged less than 10 points per game of his entire career is yelling at you like jj reddick yeah. is like are you gonna really like try to listen to that try to rally behind that guy yeah, like but you know I, I i don't know that matters as much i think jj's done enough in his career that he should be able to command respect mm -hmm. um but Someone like LeBron, I think LeBron is one of those students that, like, he's like a student that, like, if he feels like he's smarter than the teacher. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It, it, I mean, it's it LeBron James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justified. Yeah. And yeah. I felt like in previous, with previous coaches, LeBron felt that way. And yes. I think with JJ, he feels more of like. He a, wants him. Oh, it's like he wants him to succeed. Age. Yep. We kind of, like, see the game the same way. Yep. Right. You know, JJ's always been known as, like, a smart basketball player. So, yeah. I, I think it'll vi uh, vibe. And um, they'll they'll be tough at times for sure. Mm -hmm. So, sa wait, they're at seven or eight then? Eight. Nine. No, Lakers eight. at nine. No, you're trying to put the Clippers Why above the Lakers. Clippers, yeah. I'm going to tell you something about the Clippers. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> tell me outside. I, like, in my mind, I, I cannot count that Kawhi is going to be a factor nope. for them. Yeah, I, nope. they, I can automatically yeah. count that out. Yeah. Lakers, I, Lakers eight. And I don't trust yeah. James Harden at is this point. James yeah. Harden's no. going to lead a team like it's like at he's on the Rockets? At this point in his career? But what, what about Houston? Houston should That's be That's what eight. I'm thinking I, about. Well, I like Houston, but, like, I still think – I 
for me, that's why even talk like not having Steph Curry still up. Steph and LeBron, they're just too difficult for me to count out in these standings. And that's why, like, I understand when we look at, like, like the team and how people feel about them. I think we are very down, obviously, on the Golden State Warriors. And we're like, what else are they going to do, especially when you're in this Western Conference? But at the same time, you guys know this. Steph Curry is a madman out there yeah, of course. still right. and of course. he can he can do so much just as an individual and that's why like when we talk about lebron we talk about the one two punch with him and ad whatever but with steph i just think he can even propel them maybe even above the clippers oh i i mean i i, I can make i'm I, not I, high on the clippers i, I, can, I yeah. can make a i can make a warriors case right now i mean i think you know their ceiling is six okay um, whoa it's just I, mean, I, I can see that. Let me let's look at last year. Yeah. You had the Clay Thompson contract situation. It they did not get solved before the season. It lingered last year. It was it was problematic. Clay was definitely thinking about life after Golden State and or just thinking about his future in general. Then the, all the Draymond drama of last mm-hmm. year. Draymond like was suspended indefinitely. Like he like left for a minute. Yeah. Like he missed like what twenty plus games? Yeah. You know, if Draymond doesn't miss twenty plus games, they're not a playing team, and so. And then that was like the Kaminga breakout, and then Draymond came now, back. Now, yeah. fast forward the Clay thing, whether it's good or bad, he's no longer there. It's different. Andrew Wiggins, it, he's had so much stuff go on the last couple of years. Oh, His yeah. father just died, and in some ways. I think it's, you know, you hear this when, when people have been suffering a long time. I don't know if you guys have experienced death in your, in your life or whatever, but, you know, seeing someone who's, like, struggling with their health and it's like they're going to die, but y- the emotion of seeing them yeah. at the end. Th- there have been people have talked. My grandma talked about this when my grandpa died. It, there was, like, a sense of relief that, like, they weren't in pain anymore and, like, they were just at they peace. They could, like, live their life and my now. my point being is, like, Andrew doesn't, like, have, like, to worry about his dad's health his it's just not there anymore and i think he could focus more on the game again and not be so in and out that but there was also a little bit of turmoil with the warriors not wanting him to go play with team canada over the summer so like you even think about that it's like oh is are 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 the vibes off a little bit there kerr was just pumping off the other day and I, i think so I think he's in a good spot mentally. And with the coach. I mean, y- you know, the, the changes they did make, you had Buddy, whatever. I mean, he could shoot it. De'Anthony Melton, I like De'Anthony Melton. Splash if healthy. Um, and I like slow-mo. I mean, they're solid, but uh, like Lauren said, I'm sorry, when you got Steph, yep. Steph with he all can that make stuff that went wrong last year, Steph found a way yes. to will them to yeah. that spot. But also, I think if the young guys can take a leap, like – Kuminga definitely needs to work on his spacing, his mm-hmm. jump shot, everything, right? But he's a – I'm not going to say dominant, but he can, he can be a force at the rim. And sure. Pods, great rookie season, and that's why they didn't include him in trade talks Well, they at love all. him. Yeah. They love it, Pajemski. Yeah, if, they, if he can take that step up and m- not make it so that Steph has to just be the, be the guy like he was last year – Maybe they could sneak in. So we're shoving the Warriors at nine. I don't know. And yeah. moving the Clippers down to Be- ten. Because you also have New Clippers Orleans. Clippers out the play-in for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. We forgot about New Orleans. Oh, my. Wait, no, no, no. We're putting New Orleans ten and moving the Clippers down to 11. Hmm. New Orleans above the Lakers. Yeah, we New could. Orleans has they to go above center. the Lakers. They need a center. Yeah. I, I feel like either, like this year, I think either LeBron or Steph is going to miss the play-in. I, I, it, it's just a feeling because both of those teams, like the Lakers, are not better. Sure, they made a coaching change, but compared to everybody else in the West, they are not a better basketball team. Well, you think the Clippers do- are roster good, wise? So that- well, I, I think the Clippers, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't think New Orleans is better than last year. Um, and really? Mm. They got objectively they got better. Uh, uh, Valanciunas, but on paper they got they, better. They lost Marshall. They, Dyson Daniels. Dyson Najee. Daniels, Najee Martin. I uh-huh. mean, there's some dogs. Valanciunas, his voice in the locker room, meant a lot to that team. Yeah, on paper, you go, oh, DeJounte Murray, that's what he's seeing the ball a lot. And, you know, oh, Zion, if he could finally. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think if Zion can, like, get in shape, 
around the time Luca gets in shape, they'll be. He fine. is in shape. Well, Did some of the pictures, but yeah, it fluctuates. So we'll see. I mean, if he, you're right. If he's in shape and ready to go, it's scary. Skinny. But the thing that I think has to be talked about more, Brandon Ingram. Okay, like, but Whoa. look, this th- th- we just talked about with Clay. That stuff matters with a team. When a guy is like uncertain about his future somewhere and like what his role is gonna be, like, are they invested in me? That impacts things. Yeah. So yeah, on paper you look at pure talent. Yeah, they could be a really good team, but I just think there's other stuff. And you, one of you guys mentioned the big situation. It's not good. It is <laughs> not good at all. So with New Orleans, the other thing they need, I, I, I think they need to get to the point where they think about bringing CJ off the bench. You got to play Herb Jones. You got to play Trey Murphy and kind of commit to that guy, it, those guys a little bit more too. So um, New Orleans intriguing, but I, I, you know that's another team that. Are we putting New Orleans above the Clippers? Yeah. Okay. I, I am. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cole's Cole. like, wait, where Cole. are we putting the Clippers? Wait, you're moving New Orleans to top eight now. This is where it gets challenging yes. when you start looking at the West. Yeah. Is I I think you could make a case for all like Houston. You could make a case for Houston, New Orleans, right? The Lakers, like you can. It's bunched up. It so, really is bunched up. So let's just go. Let's go over this. So then we have this. So we we're just. I'm just so I have from one on. We have OKC, and then we're gonna go Minnesota. Then we're gonna go Dallas. Then yes. we're gonna go Kings. Then we're gonna go at five. We decided Denver. Denver. Six. We decided Phoenix. Phoenix. Seven <laughs> is we, Memphis. 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 Eight. We're gonna go Lakers. Or Houston. Lakers or Golden State? No, no, no. no. Mm. Lakers in New Orleans. For me, I'm not high on Golden State or Clippers at let's all. Let's go Lakers. Let's go Lakers. Then let's go New, New Orleans. Orleans. Fine. Even though I'm so, you guys, I think it's crazy to count out Steph though. Yeah, yeah, but with New Orleans also, it's not like it's just those guys, Dejounte, Fine. Zion, we'll and we'll go Brandon. New Orleans. They have Herb Jones and Trey Murphy also, who can that's true definitely step into that role if Brandon Ingram decides to. Get New Orleans nine, we said then. Not New Orleans. Yeah. And then let's go Golden State ten. Yeah. Houston or is, uh, no. is Victor is Victor gonna take that? No, lead? no, not yet. Not as a team yet. Even that though it's it, but yeah. so let's just, I f- I feel like Houston was like two games back last year and they got yeah, really that is hot true. at the end of the year. Yeah, and they were like the Golden State but were coming. Weird, the though, Tar Houston. Like, they did it with Shen Goon out, you know? They yeah, did. Sure. And Jalen got that. hot out of nowhere, and you're like, okay. I and he got hurt in our arena. Let's go Houston 11, then. Houston, wait, who's 10? Uh, Golden State. <laughs> Come on. You can't count stuff like this. You even had you had, you had had good reasons for even Where some of their other. I feel, like, I feel like losing Clay was too big of a change for them to be that high. Yeah. But 0 for 10, though. So, like, was he really that valuable? Yeah, yeah. Was he really <laughs> there? 0 for 10. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it was just such a don't. Monumental piece. I don't, don't know. Don't let this distract I, you that yeah, Clay Thompson went over ten. But vibes you guys, matter. you guys are gonna put. Then you're gonna put Houston and the Clippers above Golden State. Not the Clippers. not not the. Okay, okay not so the you want to? Oh, I've given up. I okay, given fine. Up. You want to put Houston above Golden State? I yes. want to because above Steph freaking Curry. But the yes. vibes, like it's just they're so off. They they this is first time since 2010 without Clay Thompson. Those yeah. three. I mean, we're not proclaiming them as like a four seat. We're talking about them being 10. Like, I think that's probably a fair area for them. Here's my thing on Houston. Did they, where did they get better this off season? Uh, The shooting, Uh, the shooting. And and I'm going (laughs) to assume that their young guys develop. Reed Shepard's going to like have like a big impact year one. And I would, cause Mm. definitely they have the defense. They have a Sar Thompson. I mean, Amen Thompson, um, Reed Shepard's not a bad defender, and they—I yeah. mean—they have the scoring. Jalen Green, um, you, you know, they also have Dylan Brooks, Ken Whitmore, uh, Alperin Sangoon. Um, even if they need a like a really they physical seem like big a team guy. that they're not—they're gonna be a team. I mean, they were already trying to try to—they were trying to get KD, KD at one yeah. point. They, they got, got the right. Suns. I think they have their eyes set on something different. I think Udoka likes some of the pieces, and I think this is kind of another year for him to figure out all right who, who are the guys that i believe are a part of this team right, right. they're time? still because like building this group is not it like they're good enough to be a 500 team they're good enough to be a play-in team really they're tough 
you know, like, but I, I think they're a trade away. And I, you know, I, I wonder if Shengun could be that guy that, that they, they look to move potentially. Maybe. Wow. And I like him. I, I, no, I like him personally, but like to, to get better and to get, they, they, they seem like they're star hunting. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. weren't they uh, awesome? Maybe they're a Giannis the team. Maybe they're a Giannis team. I don't know. In the future. Okay. God. Why am I throwing so many hot you, takes? You really are. Off, um, and also, like, it's so funny because I think Deuce and I both last year super high on Schengen. So Me too. It was, and, and I'm not one to fall into that trap of like, oh, look, that player's out and the team is playing so much better. I, I think there was something there, though, when he was out and they were playing different because he is such a huge anchor of their offense, yeah. right? Like where they it's play through him. And so it is different. And not to say that he isn't a great player and that his style of play wouldn't work on so many different rosters. But I think that's why when we if we have Houston in that 11th spot right now, we can be totally wrong, but you got to put Golden State at that 10. I can, I can be fine with that okay. just because – um, but I'm not going to count out Houston fair, to take this. Fair. But I think that totally. Houston's going to take a big leap, especially their young guys, take a big leap this year. But you can't count out well, Steph These Curry, are, so. by the way, predictions of the Western Conference where all of these are probably going to be so wrong by the end of the year. Exactly. Like it's Western Conference and Eastern Conference. I, I, I know I said earlier, like, the Kings could – their ceiling is two. I think the bottom for them is, like, nine. Ten, yeah. Ten, like – that's what the West is this year. Mm -hmm. I know we're venturing now. It's a bloodbath. We're now venturing into the teams near the bottom. Like these, these next few teams that we're going to be talking about. Well, uh, Portland's the worst team. Well, tr yeah, but wait, 12, 12 Clippers though. But yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. And the Clippers, to me, look, I think they've shown in previous years, even when they're banged up, like they, you look at their roster, like oh, it could be very good, but they find a way because Ty Lue is a great coach and he gets the most yeah. out of talent. They'll be like competitive. I just the Kawhi injury stuff. I just can't ignore it. I just can't. Thirteen San Antonio. Yeah, I, I'm fine with Absolutely. that. I'm good. Okay, with that. I'm good with that. Because I I think that like with San Antonio, their their goal is to kind of just develop Wemby and kind of like give like the young guys that they have like have like the veterans that they like Chris Paul added, and Harrison Barnes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like just give them pointers and just like set up for like three years from now. And also the the stat that Chris Paul has where every team that he goes to, he like makes their win total so much higher, every yeah. new team. And, and we've seen what he's been able to do with younger groups, yeah. you know, and like... What he did with Shea in OKC. Okay yeah, it was... And they it, were not supposed to be good that year. No. And yes, so truly, I think that addition um, will only make San Antonio one of those annoying teams that we were right. Yeah, in the I think Conference, their ceiling, or in the their ceiling, they could be a 500 team. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm super high on I'm, I'm not like they're not going to be like contenders whatever yeah. but I'm really high on San Antonio this year as a team that could be a sneaky playing team and kind of some, some Well, they didn't like their situation with guards last year, lead guards. I mean, they, they Pop has openly joked about they had no one that could throw Victor a lob. Yeah. Well, getting it's Chris Paul, uh, you know, Chris yeah, Paul was like that guy Lob is City, help. Yep. and I love Stefan Castle. We saw him at the California yeah. Classic. I, I took a picture of the Met California Aww. Classic. Yeah. He's gonna be. I. Th I mean, he's a great feel for the game. He has His a really instincts. Good physical. He, he feels so spurs. Like well, how yeah. gritty he yep. is. Defend. Yeah. So. So Utah fourteen. Yeah. And Portland fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Markinen's a stud, but after that, you're looking around going, okay. Th I know that people like Keontae George, but I mean. They're just not going to be good enough. They're they're well coached, not going to be good enough unless Ainge does something crazy and you know makes some sort of big move. And then Portland is just bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, but DeAndre makes me so mad. Like how skilled he could be versus his mentality. Oh, I know. Like, it, it's just yeah. yeah what you is know, happening? And it, it's it's in life you see this, um, and you'll notice it when you get older when you work with certain people. It doesn't so matter. This the old field. guy telling you. I know, you guys. but I'm just talking about like in basketball, whatever. It's like you see people with talent, but it's like you know. So there's a lot of people who question DeAndre Ayton's love for the game. I don't know DeAndre Ayton personally, so I, I hate to do it. But I'm just saying, like, that's been a rap on him. And that you see a lot of talented people in life. You're like, man, if you just, like, cared a little more, if you just wanted yep. it. Having that love for something yep. and to go after and go get it, that could elevate you to another Absolutely, level. Absolutely, yeah. All right, so for the West, if we're putting Portland at four, 15 and Utah 14, we got one – uh, OKC, right. two, Minnesota, three, Dallas, four, Sacramento, five, Denver, six, Phoenix, seven, Memphis, eight, um, what was it? LA? LA, we yep. Yeah, Lakers. New Orleans, nine, 
Um, Warriors 10. Warriors 10. Houston 11. San Antonio. Oh, and Clippers 12. San, San Antonio, Antonio 13. Uh, Utah 14. <laughs> Portland 15. I love it. I love, I love it. it. And you know what? There's going to be something we're going to be so wrong on. Yeah. It's, it's be just so hilarious. We all just consensusly said that uh, Portland was going to be 15 and they're just going to like win the title. Oh this my God. Scoot Henderson could shoot now. <laughs> <I> <laughs> oh, that's so God. crazy. No, it should be. It's going to be a really fun season and like it's going to be a tough Western Conference. So it's going to be fun. I just think in general, too, is like it's this league has so much talent and they're probably in a good spot to expand now. But the, the, the all these teams we talked about. Like the separation from ten to two or three is not a lot. In the yeah, West. it's and that's it's what just, makes it. Yeah. I think for fans, like it's so it makes exciting. it so uh-huh. fun for us to watch every night because you just don't know. Literally last season, the top three of Denver, Minnesota, OKC came down to the wire. Like everybody yeah. was watching those games. Like there was like probably like Denver needs to win two. The Minnesota. And thing about Dallas last uh, two years ago Ooh. did not make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Oh, last year now, right. they went to the NBA finals. They didn't make the play so in and out. Last year, I, I I don't know what you guys predicted, but I'm going to go ahead and say you did not think Dallas was going to be in the NBA not. finals team. So. <laughs> because like the chemistry between like Luke, Luke and yeah. Kyrie, it, it didn't work out. Yeah. I, I was kind of like at the beginning of last year, like they might have to trade Kyrie if it doesn't he work out. He did say that. I remember. He said, if it doesn't work this year, you trade Kyrie. Yeah. I, yeah. He said that flat out. Well, in the terms. And, and then weeks. it worked out. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. You, you can't predict something. Yeah. It's, fun. it's super yeah. fun. But really fun, yeah. we got one month to go. Super excited for the season. Thank you all for coming on our show. And thank you, you guys, for watching. And we will see you all later. Bye. Peace out.